All right, we'll go with the line of Messier, Anderson, and Mulesone against Craven with Poulin and Ilkerson as Salah the puck shot into the Oilers' zone. Marsh back with Samuelson. Edmonton, a little shovel pass up to Kent Nielsen. Lost and rolled toward the net and deflected wide by Poulin. Fights against Craig Mooney. Puts it around to the near side to Craven. Craven is spun off the puck by the Oilers' Kevin Lowe. Puck still behind the Edmonton net and peeled up on the far side to Glenn Anderson. And away to center where it's picked off by Shell Samuelson. Wants to penetrate. Runs into traffic. Is straightened up on a check by Mooney. As the Oilers go around the horn and work it up on the left side. Anderson threw at the flyer line. Long drive and that's blocked off by Hextall. The rebound caramel out the center right where Rutzelainen is now positioned along with Randy Gregg. Puck into the zone. Fires up on the near side. Lindsey Carson drops it away to center ice and Craven is caught up to by Anderson who turns back the other way into the Philadelphia zone. Left circle. Drive and that's deflected short side wide. Marsh around to the near side. Headman's Lindsey Carson and away at its center ice to center Sallow against Gregg. Long shot wide of the net from the left top circle and Lindsey Carson in there the four check. Fights off the check of Retzelainen. Gets it off to Ron Sutter. To the point to Howe. Screen shot. Rolls wide of the net as it got behind your Centering pass in front and rolls through the crease. And the Flyers are getting what they wanted. A fast start and now they've got to put something in the hole. Up on the far side and the crowd is roaring. Ron Sutter shot toward the net. Cut off by the Oilers and sent out into center right. Cut back at the flyer line. As out there now is Tikkanen with Huddy Coffey as the puck rolls to their line. The Flyers with Mellonby and now Gretzky. Outlets on the left, up through Tikkanen, and a 70-footer. It's partially deflected and kicked behind the net by Philadelphia's goaltender, Hextall. Up in the near side and out by Krop to center ice. Krop is on with Pocket and Pelly Ekmund. There's a steal by Tockett over the line. Ripping shot in on the net. The save made by Fjord and it ricochets to center ice. Ekmund turns and pucks it into the zone. There's a hold on Tockett as he tried to pursue, and it's played by Huddy to Tikkanen. Haste for a check, but the Oilers rip it up on the right wing at center ice. At the Philadelphia line comes McClellan to McSorley, and into the offensive right corner with Crystal Niski battles. He's tied up. The Flyers dig the puck out. Tockett oh. right on it, funny shot! Oh, what a careless pass! And the Oilers almost stung Philadelphia early at 2.15 of scoreless action. Well, that's something you don't want to do. You don't want to turn the puck over in your own zone, especially when you've got good control of it. The Flyers did that, but they were very fortunate as Ron Hextall made the play. And the, the play starts in the corner. The Flyers have got possession of the talk and just tries to clear it across, but it's intercepted. And the shot was taken with Daniel right there in the doorstep. But Hextall stood tall in the net for the Flyers. Edmonton does not have Bukaboom, Buckner, LeMay, Bookberger rather, LeMay, Moeller, Smith, and Van Dort. They've been going with the same lineup in the last few games. Flyers without Berube, Hill, Hospital, Kerr, Nakbar, Great Smith, Dale Stanley, and Tim Tucky. They're getting penalties right now. One penalty. Marty McSorley. Two penalties. No, McSorley and Taka. They both got and pushing and penalty. shoving with everybody. Let's hear number the call from Lou Marty Nolan. McSorley, two minutes for high sticking. Flyers penalty number 22, Rick Tockett, two minutes for roughing. Penalties come in two minutes, 15 seconds. You'll find that the referees will try and keep the the tempers down early in the game. They'll try. They'll hand out penalties, especially ones that involve players pushing and shoving and, and getting that little uh, extra hit in. One up, right? And I think they want to keep that down to a minimum and let the teams concentrate on hockey. And Farley, 61 minutes. Pocket now 68 on the playoff here. First penalties in the game, coincidental. Miners, they'll skate at full strength on the ice. McClellan is out along with McTavish and Hunter. Flyers get the draw and they kill it around the near side. An easy pick off at the point, no Philadelphia in there. Muni sends it to the top of the circle and there's a shot wide by Hunter on the off wing with a fine bullet shot left side and it ricochets all the way down the ice into the Oilers zone. Lowe is out there along with Rutzelainen. The Flyers have Eklund on along with Klopp. The puck is shot to center ice. McTavish is given the line, drops off to McClellan. Swings to the right, backhander toward the net, picked away as the Oilers use that drop to effect. Then McClellan takes it off, gets it to McTavish, takes, and then turns around and misses a shot. And the Flyers fail to get it out, and it's chipped around behind the Philadelphia net. McCrimmon finally gets it up to Sinisalo on the left wing at center. At the Oiler line, comes with Eklund into the zone, tries to make a move, and it's taken away smartly by the Oilers. What's the line? And up on the left wing, Edmonton. Trying to make a deep through Samuelson, unable to do it, but now what's the line? He's there! Shot wide. 
as the Flyers now come up, and Zezel all by himself at center is going to have to dump in. Feeds to Derek Smith. He goes in, and he's pulled down from behind, and that's going to be a penalty against Dave Hunter. The Flyers in action. A shot by Samuelson. And now the play is called, and the Flyers draw. First one with a power play coming up. 3-22 gone. In the first period, there is no score. Dave Hunter had no choice but to grab a hold of Derek Smith and pull him down. Smith had two strides on him, and he would have been in all alone on Grant Fuhr. As it was, Smith got a backhand away, but it was a missed backhand, rather. Hunter picks up the holding call at 322. He has... That was a great lead pass by Zezel. Hit uh, Smith right full flight, right on the stick. 20 minutes on the air for Hunter. Oilers with two of the three penalties. First power play, Philadelphia. They are four for 17 against the Oilers. Now the Flyers working. They have it to the near side. Eklund straight away to Howe with a bullet. Hit the oh. outside of the net to the right of Pure. Now Eklund tries to go in deep. He's checked. The Flyers wheel it to the point. In there is Messier to drive it to center ice. Howe is hawked there. Is able to spin free. Roll it at the Flyer attack line. Stolen away. And there's a short-handed breakaway for Met. Gretzky's in. Goes to shoot. Hextall the save. And the Flyers for the third straight home game almost get burned short-handed. And it was Gretz again as the puck comes to him at center ice. He's on with Messier and just bumps it in as the crowd roared after the save when Gretzky took a good shot from Peter Zezel. There's almost the steal from Hextall. The Flyers playing Puxy in their own zone and finally get it up to Poulin. Coming along with Zezel and Craven. Brink white pass, pumps to center, and here comes Messier. He's got a half step on prop. Works into the zone, drops left side, trying to find Nielsen, and then the Flyers break it away on the right wing at center right. Sinisalo into the zone. Offside, though, as he made a deep to get inside, he sent in his left wing too soon, with 4-18 gone in a scoreless first period. As you expect, the tempers will be high, or at least everybody will be on edge, and I think they want to keep things down and uh, keep their minds in what's happening. But Prop made a nice move on Messier. It looked like he was going to get beat, but he just stayed at home. Looked like he's been playing defense all along. If you remember, he got beat for a shorthand and goal from Kevin Lowe, and he was not going to let that happen again. Excellent defensive play by Brian Prop. 104 remains on that power play for Philadelphia. Players are having difficulty getting inside the Edmund Oilers zone and setting up to get the puck move and the puck control that they're looking for. Now they'll bring out Tockett along with Craven and Eklund, and they'll move Poulin or Prop at the right point with Howe on the left side. The Oilers counter with Muni and Lowe, and up front, they'll go Curry with Gretzky. Yes, in game three, which was the first one here, it was Messier scoring to open at the shorthanded, and then in game four, it was Lowe scoring the second goal of the first period. And the only two shorthanded goals the Flyers coughed up, and here they are in the third home game, and, Mess and uh, Gretzky almost bagged another. All right, the Flyers see it dumped in. They have 50 seconds left on the power play. They work up on the right side to Eklund, flying. He'll challenge Lowe. Instead, wraps it off the glass, and it hits off the back side of the cage. Lowe is there, comes around to the near side, wants to flip it out. Curry blocks it. It goes to Howe at the point. Looks into the offensive corner. He's blocked off by Eklund with the skate. To Howe, stolen away as he put it right on. Curry skated up to Gretzky at center ice. He appeals. He's going to work. Maneuver. Keeps the puck. Now cuts in. He's got an open man low. There's a pass around behind the net. Score! Kicked in. Kicked that was kicked low. in. It was kicked in by Kevin Lowe. And I don't think Dave Newell saw that. It's going to count. It sure it is. It was kicked in. He pointed he to, his, to leg. his leg. I don't know. It looked like he kicked it in. But we'll have to wait and see with our replay. But if that's the case, if it's allowed, then Kevin Lowe gets the shorthanded goal. And again... The Flyers get burned. Gresky, what a play he makes. Is he just controls the puck, controls it, moves it in. And that didn't go up. That went in off his skate. That did not go in off his thigh. It looked to me like he kicked it in. But Kevin Lowe gets his second goal of the playoffs, and again, it's the shorthanded goal. It comes out front. It's right there. And he comes off the stick, but then it comes off the blade. So what? Kevin Lowe gets it. And Gretzky the assist. It's a shorthanded goal. Edmonton again scores the first goal. Flyers had three men on the inside of the line, and Gretzky did a little lollygag at center and made his move. And they chased him and left the low again. And so for the third straight home game, the Flyers are burned in the first period on a shorthanded goal. Low from Gretzky at 5.02. And for the eighth straight game, the Flyers see the first goal scored against them. And for the ninth time in their last ten. So that takes the crowd away, and the Flyers again, after that bristling start, 
are put back on their heels as they have just five seconds left on the power play. Three first period shorthanded goals, the only ones they've given up on the year. The puck is dumped into the zone as the penalty is over. Taken off by Huddy. Clears it around to the far side and to the blue line where Crossman takes it center ice, retreats away from traffic and gives it to Eric, uh, to Nielsen. Through to Huddy and his pass hits Hunter in the stick and rolls into the flyer zone. But Gretzky was just casually skating, killing time at center ice against three flyers and then uh, saw the flyers perhaps rocks a little and then made his move. Away we go. And low for the second time as the guy left alone. Puck around to the near side. It kicks away to the point. Marsh chops at it. Right in front of backhand shot. The Flyers scramble. Knocked down at the side of the net. Here comes Philadelphia out for the puck. Turning in the corner is Carson. Carson into the corner. We're going to have a stoppage of play. Oh, he's calling both players off. And it was uh, Coffey with Dave Poulin. They both got their sticks up. They were both jabbing at each other in front of the net. And I think both of them are going to end up with penalties. We have 6.04 played into the first period at the Spectrum. Oilers won and the Flyers no score. And Flyers penalty number 20, Dave Poulin. Each two minutes for high sticking. Time, six minutes, four seconds. Coffee for the Oilers, Poulin for the Flyers. High sticking minors at 6.04. one nothing in favor of the Edmonton Oilers on that shorthanded goal by Kevin Lowe. Full in eight minutes on the air. Coffee with 26. Second set of coincidental minors. They'll skate at full strength on the ice. The Oilers now have scored five short-handed goals in the playoffs to match the Flyers' total. As Crafty Craven, Edison Hat looks on. Flyers have an offensive left circle faceoff. It'll be crucial Niski against Craven. Is that along with Derek Smith and Sinisalo? The Oilers clear it behind the net. Taken by Rutzelainen. Out there with Randy Gregg, trying to come out. Derek Smith in the corner checks off the puck. He's tied up in there. Two flyers, two uh, Oilers in the corner, and then the puck kicks free. And it's taken away and sent by the Oilers up along the near side to McSorley. He rolls it deep in the Philadelphia zone. Marsh goes in after it as Samuelson delays crucial Niski. Marsh around behind the net, picked up by McSorley, rolls it up to the blue line. Red and kept in by Yaroslav Puzar. Flyers try to come around the near side. In there is McSorley once again, and the Flyers having their troubles and wing it finally to center ice. Roll to Rutzelainen from Randy Gregg. He gives it back to his defensive partner at the Oiler line. He just lifts it high in the air and it bounces in front of Marsh. Gets in on Hextall. Plays it around behind the net. Marsh looks a wrap around to Sinisalo and pips through at center ice. As coming in was Kevin Lowe to pick him in deep. The Oilers have it there. They work to the near side and at the flyer line. They penetrate. Gretzky turns into the zone. Pivot at the blue line. He's onside. Rolls in and he got an offside as whistled by Bob Hodges, the linesman, with 7.04 gone into the first period. The Oilers on top, 1-0. Rayo Rutzelainen, who came over just at the tail end of the season after playing in Europe. Also, he gained his rights from New York, and that was the number of deals. Glenn Saylor has made and not really giving up a lot of talent to get players such as Nielsen and Rutzelainen. Gretzky, Tikkanen, and Curry on. Flyers go with a Carson, Mellonby, and Ron Sutter and shoot the puck deep in the Oilers' zone. It's touched up by Fuhrer. Plays it past uh, Sutter to the near side to Curry. Four check by Carson. It's behind the net. Stolen by Ron Sutter. Looks to make a play. Tries to hit Carson and it's picked off by Gretzky. Kicked back to Gretzky and fed out to the near side to Curry. Curry looks for a man at center ice as the Flyers drop back. He brings it into the neutral zone. Spins wide of the weak check, goes into the zone, now has a play to the near side, shoots right on, and the puck taken off, and Eddie and Bobby just mentioned too much respect and they're giving the Oilers the blue line as the puck shot in by Sutter. Fuhr drops it around behind for Gregg, back passes to the weak side. There's a tap behind the net, there's a play at the side of the net, the Flyers trying to get it in front, knocked behind just as Carson took a backhand try. Then into the corner, Mellonby is tied up by... Randy Gregg tries to spring it free, does, and then Fuhr dives way out to his left as he realized his club was in trouble defensively. The grab for the stoppage with 8.01 gone first period. Goalies are the key, and they, of course, when you get down to the final two games of uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs, everybody starts looking for who will win the Conn Smythe Trophy. And I think the player whose name has come up quite often for Edmonton has been Grant Fuhr. Right, Eklund loses the draw, and it's fed around to Muni along his right side. Prop tries to go in to keep it in. It kicks off to Eklund to prop in an angle shot. And Fuhrer does make the save, kicks it behind the net with the Flyers battling for it. There's a hook on Tockett, comes out of that corner, breaks his skate free as it was held, crosses it wildly to the far side, and only McCaffrey for Edmonton there to pick it up. 
Guard away on the left wing at center ice. Picked up by Eklund. Drives in on Hextall. He steers to the near side. And Philadelphia with Daniel out on the defense with Crossman. Bring it to center right. Crossman through and he fired it behind Tocca. It goes over the Oiler goal line where it's tapped back to the near side by Retzelainen. The Oilers out of their corner. Try to head man and they do. McTavish. He's got a stride on Eklund. He's into the zone. Up the middle. Drops to, to, to Retzelainen with a cannon shot from the top of the right circle. 8.45 gone into the first period from Philadelphia. one nothing Edmonton. Well, I believe there's more penalties being handed out. Rick Tockett is going to the penalty box for the second time tonight, as is Kevin McClellan. It happened after the shot on goal. Rutzelainen got the shot away. Hextel make a nice save. And Tockett took him out behind the net. Rutzelainen stuck his stick in Tockett's face. That upset the flyer winger. But a good shot, good scoring opportunity, and Hextel made a big save and froze it. And Tockett took him to the boards. It was after that that everything happened. McClellan, of course, jumped in very quickly to go to the aid of Rutzelainen, who gives up about five inches and possibly 40 pounds to Tockett. Now Tockett and McClellan are having their words. With that stop, Poland comes out of the box along with Edmonton's coffee. Edmonton McClellan, a double minor, four minutes for roughing. Flyers penalty number 22, Rick Tockett, two minutes for roughing. Well, you heard the calls. The Flyers will get a power play. Brock Tockett picks up only two for roughing. Kevin McClellan picks up four for roughing. And it comes at 8.45. McClellan, 43 minutes now in the playoff year. Tockett with 70. We've already had eight penalties, five of them to Edmonton. Tikkanen is going to serve the one minor that goes up on the board with the Flyers' second power play. But the Flyers' power plays in the first period of home have been a disaster as the Oilers have picked up three shorthanded goals. They have not really scored very many goals with the man advantage. Eklund tied the game in game five with a power play goal, but it shows you the value of Tim Kerr, especially with this power play unit. Oilers outscoring the first period, the Flyers in the sixth game, eight to one. The only goal in the first period by Tockett in the last minute of play on Tuesday night. The Flyers have not scored a power play goal here in the first period and have been stung again. Three short-handed goals. Messier is out there taking the draw against Murray Craven. Controls tries to pop toward the net. It's picked off by Philadelphia. How out with Crossman. And up front, they go prop with Eklund and Craven. And the Oilers have Messier on along with Nielsen as Eklund down that right side to Crossman into the zone. Shovel pass that's been in front of Prop and behind Craven. Craven is mugged, and the Oilers quickly break out three on three at center right. With the puck is Messier. Now turns as he had nowhere to go. Huddy picked up the play along with Nielsen. Then the Nielsen. He stopped at center. Here comes Eklund, but he's by himself. Penetrates along the near side. Is grabbed from behind. Spun around by Coffey. And editorially will say nothing on that as the Flyers try again into the zone. Up the middle, Eklund lets it skip, stolen away by Gretzky. He's got a man ahead of the pack. He hits Curry into the zone, has nowhere to go, pivots, and starts back. And right now, the Oilers, with that goal of taking the game away from Philadelphia, and has the early surge by Philadelphia, and now Gretzky just makes the tune down the ice and dumps it. Now's out there, the Oilers with the clock showing one minute remaining on the power play. McCrimmon on with Daniel, and up front, Poulin now, along with Sinisalo and Ron Sutter. There's a wraparound. Sutter looks, taps it back to Sinisalo, into the left hash marks in front. He had Poole in there, it skips to the far corner. Now trying to get it is McCrimmon, he's beating it up, comes Gretzky down that left side against Daniel. In, shot, deflected off the glass behind Philadelphia's Hextall, but the Flyers have lost their offense right now, and up ice they come as it's tapped through by Sinisalo to Poole in. Wrap around behind Fuhrer, the Flyers try that left side again. It skips past... Uh, Ron Sutter, and here comes McTavish up. He's dangerous. One-on-one -on -one against McCrimmon. Up the middle. Going to try to cut in on that. It's broken up by Philadelphia. And Daniel has the trouble. Loses it. McTavish short side shot. Oh, my. The Flyers are having their troubles now. And the power play has been anything but as we get a stoppage to play with 9.26 remaining in the first period. one to nothing. Little giveaway there. Rolling off uh, the stick of the Flyer defenseman and bang in on that. Turnovers could really come back to haunt you. The uh, McTavish had a chance. He cut to the inside. McCrimmon bounced, or the puck bounced off McCrimmon's skate to go into the corner. And then the turnover, McTavish comes out again with a second one. This time off Hextall's arm. You 
have control of the puck in your own zone. You don't want to give it away. You're better off to eat it rather than turn it over. I thought that carried off the post, off his elbow and then the post. Now, I think just straight off his shoulder, Gino, but nonetheless, the Edmonton has managed to outshoot Philadelphia 8-5 in this opening period, and they've had about four quality opportunities. Flyers have had the two power plays, 11 seconds remaining on this one. Flyers had that big surge in the first three or four minutes, had the crowd roaring, then picked up the power play at 322, got burned, and have wilted a bit. Buck in the zone behind Fuhr. This time he's able to set it up. Drops it off to Huddy as the penalty is over around to Dave Hunter. Is out of the box with Tekin and serving that minor, and he picks it up, tries to pass it center, and beautifully played by the back checking Sinisalo. Steals to Howe in the Philadelphia zone and up the middle. Off Sinisalo skate, he's in, slow down, and then just plays it wildly up the middle. Gets it back to the point on a deflection. The Crimin shot that hits in front as screening was Ron Sutter, blocked by Coffey, and the Oilers storm it up at center. McSorley, a pass to the far side. They cleared a shot on that, then blocked off and cleared, but not out by McCrimmon. Goes back to his stick, and then he bounces it into center. Rolls through to the near side, whacked out by Rutzelainen, and hooks it into the player bench along the near side. We have 8.39 to play in the first period from Philadelphia. one for nothing Oilers. 1-0 Edmonton leads. 8-3-9 remains in this first period. Shots on goal. Edmonton 8, Philadelphia 5. And Everton has had a, a number of their opportunities when they've been short-handed. has been twice so far this period. Mike Kuzelinski is out there with Kuzer on the left, with Sterling on the right, with Greg and Rutzelein in back. The Flyers have Pocket Eklund in prop with Crossman and Daniel. Puck ripped into the Oilers' zone. Greg behind the net, wheels it up on his defensive right side. Sterling is bumped, and then Daniel's shot from the left point is deflected back on the carom to Crossman. He puts it right behind the oiler net. Whacked out and missed, trying to clear it with Rutzelainen. There's prop behind the net. The outlet to Eklund in front. Skips right through to Crossman. Knocked down and hand pass to the far side. Pocket has to pick it up. Tries to drive to the net. Deflected to the near point. And then Daniel shot in front. No one there except the oiler defense. And it's played by Greg up on the left side to Puzar. Right winging a pass to McSurley. Has nowhere to go and then rolls it in. The Oilers have come into Philadelphia, not allowed again the crowd momentum or the Flyers' hopes for a home ice early edge to deter them. And for the third time, they move out in the first period with a lead here. one to nothing with 7.50 left as Puzar lifts it in the air, bounces it to the flyer line. Um, there's a play knocked down by Anderson as the Mars tried to come out. Then a centering play blocked away nicely by Samuelson and Craven out of his right corner. Slides it to center ice, but the Oilers have it there. And again, the Flyers are uh, held to five shots through this first period with seven minutes remaining as the Oilers put it up on the far side at center. And Samuelson buries his man as Messier, and he still has him, and we ought to get off him. Are we going to have penalties? And we do. Anderson and Samuelson will go off. The 7.21 remaining first period, Edmonton on top, 1-0. Anderson just looked up in time and Samuelson wrapped those big arms around him, almost put him into the flyer side of the penalty box. And both of them kept it up, wrestling and tussling there. And finally, Dave Newell hands out minor penalties to the players. Anderson for the Oilers, Sale Samuelson for the Flyers. 12.39, the time of the minors. It's our fourth set of double minors. And they'll play at full strength on the ice. Oilers already have six of the game's 10 penalties. Anderson 51 minutes and Samuelson 23. The Oilers with a puck in their own left wing corner. Dave Hunter tries to find the handle. He's four checked by Poulin. Sinisalo takes it away, rolls it in a little deeper. There's Messier. Oh, there's an interference on Derek Smith. Clearly thrown by Craig Muni. And an out loud Messier to break out of his zone up the middle. Swings to his left. Oh, gets a screen in front. Shot. What a save off Nielsen. And now we're going to get a penalty against Crossman for interference. <laughs> And Poland is giving Newell an earful. That was such a clear-cut knockdown of Derek Smith as he went to make the play on Messier behind the oiler net. And that's what Derek's complaining about. And I think everybody here at the Spectrum is as well. But Poland will pick up the interference Flyers ball. Number Dave Poland, two minutes for interference. The time, 13 minutes, nine seconds. Dave Poland, Flyers, two-minute minor, interference. Hextall has been some has made a number of big saves for Philadelphia in this first period as Edmonton has picked up nine shots on goal but Poland took down the man now the interference occurs 13 on 9 the time Edmonton will have their first power play chance 
Pullman with two penalties in the first period has 10 minutes. Fires five of the game's 11 penalties. Oilers on their first power play. They're three for 18 on this series. 17 for 85. That's exactly one in five or 20 percent. Well, now the Flyers they have to stop. Gretzky was out there with Crucial Niski to do a little net jamming in front of Hextall and Curry, along with Coffee and Charlie Huddy. Face off at the circle and slam down the ice by McCrimmon, who's out with Howe. And up front, they go Craven with uh, Ron Sutter. This penalty to Poulin when it takes away the Flyers' premier penalty killer as well. But how they could have missed that one on Derek because it was so blatant. There's a cross ice pass, and the Flyers pick it off from Crucial Niski. Rolls through to Craven. He's one on three. Takes it into the corner. Checked and finally has it stripped. As the Oilers' coffee does a little dump behind his net away from the forechecking of Ron Sutter at Philadelphia. And now uh, the Oilers, as Crucial Niski drops off coffee. Will lead the charge slowly up the middle at center ice. He's got Crucial Niski on the near side. Had his pass blocked. 6-12 remaining in the period and a minute 19 in the Flyer deficit. On the far side, Coffey has it. Curry as Gretzky's just patiently waiting along the left board. The Oilers trying to draw everybody over. Now Gretzky off that board as Huddy puts it onto his stick and he turns as they have an overload and he wraps it around as they try to find the near side. Brett Hetzkall picks it off and sends it weakly up the middle, but it's picked off by Sinisalo to prop and into the Oilers' own. Now they work to the near side. Sinisalo is quick shot by prop as Sinisalo screen, and then Marsh on the near side tries to keep Messier from breaking out and does. As the Oilers pinned into their own zone, only have 45 seconds on the power play. Outlet and Messier looks for Gretzky, instead plays cross ice. Christian Niski can't find the handle, and Marsh taps it all the way down alongside Grant Fuhr in the Oilers' cage. Now Nielsen is out there, joined by Rutzelainen, as Messier puts it up the middle, and Nielsen flies at the Philadelphia line. Drops, turns at the left point, hold, up the middle, nobody there, picked up on the carom, and then lost. And the Flyers take it, but they fail to get it out as the Der Derek Smith lost it. Then it's rolled around behind Marsh. There's Gretzky behind the net. Look, and he's got the Drake breaking in on the near side. The man in the crease wants to center right out in front. And he just threw it there, hoping for a deflection as the Flyers cleared it to the far point. Ruts the line and in, turning at the blue line. There's a play. Gretzky has it. Shot. Short side, and Hextall read it and grabbed for the stop at the play. Just as we have one second remaining on the pool and penalty. One of the few times you'll see Wayne Gretzky shoot from an impossible angle. He'll usually hang on to that puck and try and make a play. <laughs> One fire fan who's really into it has orange hair. Pumpkin hit. Yeah. But the play was set up by Nielsen, and usually you shoot from those areas, the top of the circles, and Gretzky cranked it up, and Hexto was right there waiting. Very rarely will you see Wayne Gretzky shoot from there. He'll make that play, and he'll hang on to it to make that play. Ten, sh ten shots on goal. Hextall's handled. The only one to get by him is Kevin Lowe and that deflection off his skate into the net. Samuelson, Philadelphia, and Anderson of the Oilers completed their penalty time and are out of the box. The only one in there now is Poulin. One second remaining. McTavish on along with Hunter and McClellan. Muni with uh, Kevin Lowe. Flyers have Craven taking the draw. The Oilers get it back to Muni. He looks. No shot. In along the near side. McTavish comes right out in front. Look out. Shot. Hextall a save. Rebound. Score. They have allowed Edmonton to go to the net constantly. And this is something Edmonton has done very well against Philadelphia is denying them the net. But they have gone to the net. And this time McClellan picks up the goal. Again on the rebound. Now McClellan is allowed, or pardon me, McTavish is allowed to walk right out of the play of corner. Makes a deke around Howe, and then McClellan standing right there to pound the rebound past Ron Hextall, and the Oilers take a 2 0 lead. So Kevin McClellan picks up the goal, and for McClellan, that's his second on the playoffs. That's just his second. It's amazing, Bobby and Eddie, the players in the last two games here that have hurt Philadelphia uh, have been the non-scorers. Lowe got his first on uh, Sunday, Greg got his third, and then uh, tonight Lowe is second and McClellan is second, and now we get another penalty. Looks like uh, Poulin. Poulin was thrown back in, and we have 4.41 remaining in the period, 2-0 Edmonton. Sticking will be the call on Dave Poulin as he got Kevin McClellan who went to the dice 
And Bruin will pick up his second consecutive penalty. And it will be Edmonton's second power play chance. Flyers have had two. They got two early on. Now Edmonton has two. This is a crucial point in the game right now for the Flyers with the Oilers in the power play and leading 2 0. If they get another one in the power play, it's a long way uphill again for the Flyers. Right now they're being outshot 12 to 5, as well as being outscored 2 0 and outplayed. Fourth straight game, third straight game, and a fourth straight game they've fallen behind 2 0. But this is something. <laughs> You know, you keep coming back and coming back, and I know that old cliche when you say, well, you can't go to the well that often, but it's always in the back of your mind when you take the lead. At least it should be in the Oilers' mind, and if that's the case, they either become cautious or else they'll just really support on and try to keep the pressure on Philadelphia. As they say, the best defense is the offense. Compositely in the first period in the series, the Oilers now outscored the Flyers 9-1. to one. They get their second power play of the night. They are three for 19. This is their 20th chance and a goal now. And the Oilers really in the driver's seat. But right now they are as the Flyers back on their heels, killing a penalty and down two nothing with less than four minutes, four or five minutes remaining in the period. Now Curry skating in there. They go, they fly right past McCrimmon. Backhand shot. Hextall to save off his glove. Almost gone to the net. Gretzky, but it's now taking it out. And the Oilers quickly get their men back. How up the middle, but Craven can't penetrate as Ron Sunner going into the zone about a half stride soon. Then the Flyers playing four corners at center ice. It's whipped finally through the near side as Crossman and Marsh come out now along with Sinisalo and Prop. And the Flyers with less than four minutes, 3.50 to be exact, trailed 2 0 and have been outshot 13 to 5. And the Oilers have really come into Philadelphia and done a number the last couple of games. There goes Messier penetrating Curry as they have had no trouble getting into the Flyers' zone. Straight away to the point, Coffey looks. Now rips the shot on save, and the Flyers poke it away. Does Hextall to Sinisalo, and he's able to backhand it from just inside the Flyer blue line along their right wing and down the ice. Peter Zezel has been lost to Philadelphia at this point right now. He has a bruised hip, but we're still finding out whether or not he'll return to action. Play at the Flyer line, broken up. Sinisalo doesn't get it out. Greg just failed to keep it in for a closing shot. Takes it, rips it into the near corner, around behind the Gretzky, looking for Messier. Marsh picks it out, tries to outlet, and it's to the near side and kept in behind the net. There goes Hextall out. He clears it off the near side. Greg keeps it in. Into that corner, Messier's got the, the big man behind the net. Hole straight away to the point. Screen, top of the right circle of Messier. Gretzky is alone in front. Close to shoot. Lost it as Hextall went down. Now a stopper, backhander. Rebound, saved by Hextall. And the Flyers really, as Hextall, oh, there was a break for Philadelphia as Prop pulled the skates right out from under Gretzky in front of the zone, allowing Marsh some breathing room. Now the penalty is over. The Flyers trying to bust into the zone. To the near side, and the pass taken off and sent up the center ice to Gretzky on the right wing at the Flyer line. Penetrates. Left corner pass. Greg takes it in the corner. Rips it around to the near side. And the Oilers are just naming the tune of the hockey game right now. 15-5. to five. The shots, they lead 2-0. They jam it up halfway down the Flyer defensive right board with 2.21 remaining in the first period. 2-0 Edmonton. Boy, I'll tell you, it's a mystery to me. The Flyers at home here... In these games against Edmonton, you expect them to come out really fired up in the first period and play a real strong first period, but that has not been the case at all. Gretzky had a good chance, pulls it around behind for a sec, comes back, he's having a look. It's going to come around the outside, gets the puck up in the air, is blocked by the defense, and then Greg just comes in close, he gets the shot, and Hextall was able to get that big catching glove on the puck to deflect it up over top of the net. Edmonton has moved their defense, but into that slot area very well, especially in the games here at Philadelphia. And when that defenseman moves in there, that gives you four people down low, and it always has one man open. And that's the case there. It was an attempted shot by Gretzky that de deflected off a of flyer skate, but nonetheless, Greg was moving into position for either a rebound or that pass. McTavish takes the draw against his 14 number counterpart, Ron Sutter. Philadelphia to draw Samuelson back with Marsh and up front Mellonby with Carson and Ron Sutter. Round to the point. The Oilers keep it in up the slot. There's short side shot by Lowe. Hit the outside of the post to the right side of Hextall. And the Flyers just having an, an awful first period considering the importance of the game. McCavish at center. The Oilers are crisp. They're passing. They're getting the blue line. And they have not allowed the Flyers a decent shot on goal in the last 10 minutes of the period. Up ice, a rink-wide pass. There goes Mellonby in. Tries to beat low, puts it up the slot, and just deterred enough 
by Muni was Ron Sutter as the Oilers take it away. McCavish, who set up the last Oiler goal by McClellan, rig-ragging at center right. The Flyers chasing and not being able to do much. Now McCavish penetrates, tied up along the far side. The Oilers just have not had any trouble at all penetrating the Flyers' own. Buck up ice. Eklund trying to forecheck, but Huddy screens him off, and Coffey in his own zone. Stops off to Huddy, and Huddy sweeps right past Prop as the Flyers now struggling to gain control of the game. Into the right wing corner. Huddy around behind the net, skated off. Flyers take the puck, and that's how. Karen pass, then blocked by Eklund off the skate, but right to center, where Huddy's pass is blocked. Eklund into the zone, a break. Philadelphia comes to the near side, rolls it to the net, and it's cut off away from Tuckett by Huddy and sent to center ice as we have one minute remaining and a bad first period for Philadelphia. Eklund lifts it in along the near side. Howe is beaten, and the Oilers pump it to center ice. Cross ice pass is into the seats or into the penalty box. At one time, the shots were 6 5 Edmonton. They have had nine of the last ten shots of the period. What an unbelievable pattern the series has taken. 2 0 Edmonton, first period, almost as if it were a handicapped horse race, and they say, Now, Philadelphia, see what you can do. Twice they've caught the Oilers, once they have not, and they've got to make it three out of four, or it's the end. Gavin Lowe in his own, but long way to go. Half a minute in this period and full 40 minutes of periods, two and three. Behind his net, zigzagging is Kevin Lowe. Doesn't want to make a mistake now. The Flyers have man up, but nobody forechecking. The Oilers just named the tune in their zone and finally lift it out. It rolls to Samuelson, and he's able to sweep it out the center. Messier there is blocked off. Craven knocked down at center right. Kevin Lowe slaps it in. Flyers uh, work it up to Poulin. Poulin is tripped up. And the puck comes to center ice. Roll to the line with seven seconds left. And the Flyers, again, are going to go in to the dressing room with a two-goal deficit as Muni retreats behind the net. And we quietly come to the end of the period, and we're going to get a cross-check on Murray Craven, who decked Glenn Anderson. So the Flyers start the second period with a deficit, and Brad Marsh is talking to Dave Newell, who says, I don't want to hear it. Sam, you look like you got the stick up high in the face. He looks like he's... Leading. Samuelson will get that penalty. Just lowers the boom from behind and Anderson, but Anderson had gotten his stick up on Samuelson. And Samuelson just went after him. Seward cut him on the nose. And Sammy just had enough, but he went right after Anderson and gave him a shot. And the penalty was called. We're going to keep it here a minute. We'll tell you. That to this point, there have been 12 penalties called equally divided, but we'll have more. The Oilers outshot Philadelphia 15 to 5. They scored the two goals. Kevin Lowe is second in two straight games here. Shorthanded Glenn with Gretzky. The here we go. For high sticking. Glenn Anderson gets two Flyers for high sticking. Number 28, Shell Samuelson, two minutes for cross checking. And Shell gets two Time minutes for cross checking. Now, I guess the Flyers are arguing since it drew blood, the high stick, why not a five minute major? And Dave Newell is explaining. All right, we have two more penalties uh, rather than the deficit. They'll skate out in the second period at even strength. So at the end of one, game six, Stanley Cup Finals, the Oilers two, and the Philadelphia Flyers no score. Flyers aggressively in on the zone as they work offensive right side. Sinisalo will pick it up. He's out with Poulin and Craven. They work offensive right corner, checking in there is Messier. Down goes Poulin as he was knocked down behind the net by the Oiler defenseman, and up comes Nielsen at center ice along with Lowe and McTavish at the flyer line. They drop to Kevin Lowe. He's going to try to cut in front, but the whole play is offside. Craig McTavish, of course, a member of the Boston Bruins. Personal problems in his life. And away he went after leaving Boston to the Oilers, where he's been a great player. Lowe is second shorthanded. 5.02 from Gretzky and Perry, and then McClellan, a tap-in of McTavish, who shot. Muni, the second assist, 15-16 the time. The Oilers out shooting Philadelphia 15-5, and there were 14 penalties in that first period, evenly divided. That's the most penalties in a period of a flyer playoff game since the first period of game number two here with the Rangers when they were 21. There's a giveaway by Nielsen, and Marsh leads to the charge, left-winging a pass. Poulin is caught up with, taken down by Messier. Centering pass cleared by Craven and trying to get it back to the point. Taken away by Nielsen to low and low drops back to his own right circle to Muni. The Oilers now just appear to be a step uh, stronger, faster, quicker than Philadelphia, and they come into the zone. Look out! Drive and work. Kent Nielsen has not had a point in this series. Took a 50-footer and went 25 feet uh, 
into the deep seats at the end. We have 19.08 remaining in this second period. 2 nothing Edmonton. Gretzky, Kikinen, and Curry on for the Oilers with Coffee and Huddy. Flyers have Ron Sutter out with Mellonby and Carson, and Howe back with McCrimmon. Coffee at center, drills one in on Hextall, bounces off to the flyer defensive right corner. Philadelphia clears up, but stolen away from Mellonby and kept in by the Oilers. They put it behind the pillar. Oh, kicks out. Gretzky takes it. He's got a man up the middle. It deflects away, and out comes Philadelphia with a puck. Derek Smith against Coffee. Takes him to the boards as he goes into the zone. Tries to cross, then takes it back and rolls it right onto the stick. Uh, Coffee outlets to Gretzky down that left wing into the pillar. Man up the middle is Tikkanen. There's a roll at the side of the net and a little shovel in by Curry. Just to the front left of Ekstall, and he had to be very good to cover that little squidgy and keep it away. We have played 124 into the second period. The Oilers leading the game 2-0 and out shooting Philadelphia ready 17-5. Again, uh, Gretzky and what's happening, he's being allowed to do as he pleases with very little pressure. And then he rolls it to Curry who just takes a little backhand swipe at it and is able to get it in on the net. The Oilers uh, learned a lesson this past Sunday after coming off a defeat when they were up 3-0 and shut down the Flyers 4-1. On Tuesday, they were up 3-1, lost it, and they're doing the same thing tonight as if they've learned the lesson very well the second time. Puck off the face, off rolls in on Hextall, bangs it, kept in, bullet shot from the left side by Tikkanen, then Gretzky ties, tries to center, and the Flyers right now, the mind and is willing, well, the spirit is willing, but the flesh seems to be weak, as we're going to have a penalty against Curry, our coffee for pulling down Derek Smith, It'll come at 141 in the Flyers with an offensive face-off. Get a power play coming up, trailing 2-0. Flyers were trying to break out the zone and set something up. Coffee trying to slow down Derek Smith. Cut at him, and Smith went down. And Coffee gets called for tripping. 141 the time. Flyers now have their third power play. And again, that's positioning. When the referee's behind the play, you usually just see the end result. That wasn't a real strong touch by Paul Coffey. Philadelphia is 0 for 2 on the advantage tonight. Popped up another shorthanded goal, their third of the series. They're now 4 for 19 on the power play. All right, they've got Cockett out there along with Craven and Eklund. And Cross, but on the left side, prop on the right. Messier is out with McTavish, and they have... Kevin Lowe, the puck, around behind the oiler net. Flyers in pursuit. McTavish can't unload. Kept in, and the centering pass deflected as it went back to the point and threw the flyer defense to center right. Retreating his prop. Gets away from McTavish. Goes left side to Crossman. Right side into the zone to Eklund, but he loses it off the stick, and the Oilers put it to center. The Flyers have had but five shots in the game and then one or two since the six-minute mark of the first period. Puck behind the net. Craven takes it away. That prop up the slot, it bounces off the stick. Flyers just can't get a hold of that elusive uh, pumpkin tonight. Puck behind, Craven is taken out. Tries to battle it, gets it to Tockett. Back to Craven behind. Looks to come out, straight away to Eklund. Look, drive, blocked off, and there's a foot race at center right. Eklund trying to beat uh, Messier to it and taps it back to Hextall, and Hextall beats to his left, away from the play of Messier, and then up by Crossman to Eklund at the oiler line. Penetrate, drops to the left to prop. Prop in the corner, around behind, read by the Oilers, broken away to Gretzky, but he doesn't get it out, but then gets a second try as it rolls out of the corner, and he sends it down the ice. 50 seconds left on the power play, and the Flyers' offense has not appeared yet tonight. Zezel up as he's back after an injury in the first period. Drops to Poulin, up the middle, shot. That's deflected wide, and the Oilers just take it off and lift all the way down the ice with 39 seconds left on the advantage. Now it's McCrimmon looking for Howe up on the left side, picked up by Nielsen. A wraparound that sure ought to slow down, set up either way for Greg. A wraparound block, and then Poulin didn't find it, tackles Huddy. The puck rolls out into the slots, and Asalo is beaten to it, and turning it up, finds his Ken Nielsen. So the Flyers with 18 seconds left, not only haven't had a shot, haven't got it set up in his own properly. And then as they penetrate their whistle for an offside, and on that we're going to have players exiting the penalty box. 14 seconds remain in the minor penalty to Paul Coffey, but you have to give it to Edmonton Oilers. They are playing a very solid game. It's a similar style and a similar game that they played in the Sunday night victory here over Philadelphia. 
4-1 before the teams went to Edmonton. They just really shut down Philadelphia. They're standing it up at the blue line extremely well. They're not allowing the Flyers to penetrate, and if they are, you have to really work for it. And once that puck gets in that zone, they get very, very aggressive to the puck. They jump on that puck and force the Flyers into making bad passes and sometimes even taking the play away from them. One realistically, again, has to look at the fact that this is their 25th game in 50 days, and you wonder if the gas tanks now aren't low. Puck to the near side, Sinisalo picks it up. The penalty is over. He's out of that corner. Ron Sutter puts it to the side. They had a man there, but it never reached him prop, and the puck comes to center ice. And the penalty is over, and the Flyers 0 for 3 on the power play, and it just cost them one goal short-handed. Puck out to center ice. Flyers drill it in, and Flyers do look. Uh, not physically tired, but they look a little empty. Now, there's a play at the Oiler line, as there's been absolutely no pressure on the Oilers at any time this evening in either end of the ice. They take it away, and as Bob said, this looks so much like the other night when they were playing keep away and able to do just pretty much what they want. There's a block in the zone. Cockett, he goes to shoot, and it's just taken off the stick. Shoots again higher than that. And to the near side, Philadelphia picks off, rolls it behind low to Cockett, tries to tap it out. Cockett's pushed up against the board. Fuhrer then goes behind, taps it loose. Then it goes right back behind, and the, uh, the Flyers wailing at it. Can't get a handle, and then Lowe puts it up, and here comes Anderson along with Messi at center right, and Nielsen three on three. The offside pass are into the zone, and we have a whistle. Offside, 440 gone into the second period, 2-0 Edmonton. 2-0 Edmonton leads, 15-20 remains in the second period. And it's been very quiet here as the Flyers have failed to even pick up shots in this game. Only five, and that came in before the 10-minute mark of the first period. They haven't had a shot on goal in 15 minutes and 52 seconds. Up at center ice. It may be an indication, not so much of what Edmonton's doing, but what the Flyers are unable to do this evening after so many games through this long odyssey of a season. The Glenn Sater's going to be pretty happy now with the performance of his Edmonton Oilers. The first period picking up a 2 0 lead with four minutes and 50 seconds gone here in the second period. They've continued to shut the Flyers down and play very, very well defensively. On the other side of the coin, Mike Keenan is suddenly wondering what does he have to do to get him going. Kirk is out there with Cruzar. They've seen a periodic shift, but behind Fuhrer, who's had nothing to do for 16 minutes of the game. Even when the Flyers get in, they just don't seem to have the strength or the wherewithal, the quickness to make a pressure move against the Oilers. As McClellan, uh, McSorley is out there, just pumps it to center ice. Round behind the net away from Fuzar, wrap up to center ice. And Asalo taps it through at center. Then a rink-wide pass by Craven is behind Eklund. He has to drop off to Crossman, will come up into the zone. Comes to the near side, he's up the middle. Tries to work in to the near side, spins it in on the net as he's pulled down. The Oilers try to come out. It's kept in along the near side from Puzar, and then he sends it all the way down, and they say no icing, and you wonder why. As retrieving is Eklund behind Hextall to the rear left. Gretzky goes in after Eklund and comes out in front. Gretzky in pursuit as Eklund outlets up on the left side, and Howe will start two into the zone, up the middle, left side, shot on Fuhrer, and it whistles wide as McCrimmon coming off the bench for Erdogano uh, couldn't keep the puck in, and there's a break. Gretzky's got Curry two on one, but again, a two-line offside pass. 5.52 gone into the second period from Philadelphia, 2-0 Edmonton. Howe got the first shot on goal for the Flyers in quite a while, and it almost handcuffed Fjord because it was deflected. It went off the stick of coffee and just about find its way, found its way, rather, into the far corner. Flyers first shot in 17 minutes and four seconds of action and just their sixth of the game through six minutes of the second period. Flyers with a puck behind their net. McCrimmon and Howe reading the play was Curry and blocked off Howe's outlet. He lost the puck and the Oilers drop it right back in. Behind the net it comes. Boy, as they look at this series, they'll look at that first period total, 9-1 total goals Edmonton. Play up the middle. Zezel off to the near side. Mellonby couldn't get the handle. Now they work on it behind the net. Mellonby scrambled. Can't get the handle. Huddy pokes it up on the near side, and Gretzky just bangs it off a of body to center ice. To the far side, past Zezel. Huddy takes it into his zone and puts it up on the left side. Curry overskates. Mellonby has to wait for his line to clear, and then it gets boxed in. Sends it in deep, and the Flyers are going to use that to change. 
as Sutter comes out along with Samuelson, Mars Brown for the first time, and Carson, as Gretzky penetrates Curry for the net, they want to drop into the front, taken away and lost in the corner as Gretzky was knocked down, here comes Dave Brown on the ice for the first time, and Bobby just mentioned a minute ago, the Flyers are going to have to get more men on the ice, meaning more different people. Now Ron Sutter penetrates. Left side to Samuelson. Man in front. Couldn't get him the pass. Lindsey Carson goes back to the point. Marsh is shot. And there was Brown to tap it in on that. Shoots the rebound. All pure. Brown takes it out of the corner. Man in front. Shot. Oh, what a save. Oh. get things to work and it's Brown only on his second shift sit up Lindsey Carson all along and it looked like Grant Fuhr was able to get there quickly enough but he was he did but Carson's shot was a little bit too firm but Brown made a real heads up play rather than firing that puck blindly he held on to it and waited until he found an open man and one of the few times Edmonton was found the sole defenseman in front of their net Hoosier trying to cheat Jack Lindsey Carson, and Carson puts it in for his third at 7-12. Now will that give them adrenaline? Watch and see this last next five or six or ten minutes of the game. In center ice, McClellan shot deflected in on Hextall. Back to the point, low shot, way into the far corner. McTavish spins away from Carson, around to the right side of Hextall. Comes to the hash marks, into the slot, the low, shot on! And Hextall got that left hand out to keep it away, as that was tapped just about shin bone high to the long side. And it was the Oilers who tried to strike back. Up they come on the far side, and an outlet pass is off the stick. Uh, Mooney into the far seat to the neutral zone faceoff. That was a big goal for Flyers. It's got this building humming again. It's got him back into the game. And it was just an excellent play by Dave Brown to get it across. The Carson to put it home and to get a chance to look up into the super box and see the Snyder family. They needed something. They needed the spark, the bounce we talked about. And they finally get it. It was only their fourth shot on goal. And Lindsey Carson is the man of the hour right now as he's put this Philadelphia club within one and possibly to get them going offensively. Top, pocket, Eklund, Howe, and Daniel. Back to Daniel at the point. In front, time for a deflection nearly. And the Oilers in full flight have Puzar send it up to Kuzelniski. He's buried at center ice by Daniel as the Flyers slide it back into the Philadelphia zone. Daniel took the stick. Oh, there's a steal. Short-handed play. Offside. Offside. Stop, save, but they did not call. Yep, yep, they called the offside. It was an offside. John DeVito had called it right away, but with the crowd in an uproar, nobody heard the whistle. And I think probably an uproar is an understatement. They have just been anxious right since the Flyers came back from Edmonton after beating the Oilers 4-3 to force this sixth game. And they started out very excited. Hextall has been outstanding. And again, if the Flyers mount a comeback, you really have to take a look at it. But this is one of the few times you've seen the Flyers have come after the Edmonton team aggressively in the neutral zone. And it was J.J. Daniel, Daniel rather, who really stood up Mike Korsholnisky. But they have been not aggressive in the neutral zone Philadelphia they've been very laid back they've allowed Edmonton to penetrate their zone and then try to shut them down once they're inside the flyer zone Messier Anderson out with Nielsen little weak outlet by Marsh and the Oilers have carried play since the flyer goal and there's a breakdown in front open man all along shoots saved by Hextall turnaround save in front by Daniel and it's fired out and down the ice but rather, I think that Zezula made the play, but rather than the Flyers gaining momentum, the Oilers have just been on the attack since Philadelphia's goal. Now they look, they have Messier at center right. One-on-one -on -one against Samuelson. Man, coming up the middle is Anderson. But Samuelson takes him down at the side of the net. Boom, big check by Marsh against Anderson. There's a fight in that corner between Marsh and Anderson, quickly separated by Murray Craven. And the peppers and the volatile point of the game rises another notch. 
We have played 8.55 into the second period from Philadelphia. Edmonton 2 and the Flyers 1. Big Shell Samuelson has been able to handle the strength of Messier throughout the series. He did again as he knocked down the star forward. And then Messier trying to jam that puck loose got hit with a high forearm behind the neck by Marsh and came across with his high stick on his own. And that's what created the Fuhrer in the corner. Messier line out against Ron Sutter. Into the corner. Marsh is beaten to the puck by Nielsen into the slot. Anderson has it roll off the stick. Messier picks it up in the near corner. And they tie one another up, Messier, and out of that corner comes Messier from Ron Sutter, and we get a stop at the play, as McCrimmon is going to go off, and then he takes another punch from Anderson, and that should be a double minor for number nine if Dave Merle watches correctly. I think he did, Gene. I think he, he nodded his head as if to say they get a double minor, but both of them will be going off, and then I think Anderson, with that extra punch, is going to get... Now Messier's had some words with Melody. You can expect this, though. I mean, here we are. This is another deciding game. And we'll the emotions are on a fever pitch right now. We'll have to wait for the call. Both, both the players were struggling along the boards, trying to actually break loose. Now, the penalty come in behind where Bradford Grimmon knocked Anderson down. And there's the punch. From Anderson. So we'll have to wait for the calls regarding the penalties to Anderson and the Grimmon. 906 will be the time of these penalties as Glenn Anderson is in the box for the third time tonight. Two his two previous penalties were with Shell Samuelson. This time Brad McCrimmon will be the player in the box along with Anderson. Well, nothing is going on the board to indicate a power play for either team. There's a long discussion down to, with New Nolan, but uh, it seems to be cleared up now as Dave Newell has made his decision, and Glenn Sather and John Muckler are watching on from behind the other bench to see what the call, and here it is now with Lou Nolan. Number nine, Glenn Anderson, two minutes for high sticking plus two minutes for roughing. Flyers penalty number 10, Brad McCrimmon. Two minutes for high sticking, plus two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. Time, nine minutes, six seconds. Well, nobody will pick up the power play because Brad McCrimmon gets unsportsmanlike conduct two minutes. Uh, now, if you want me to explain that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, I'm going to be very tough to. Yeah, I'd like you to. I, <laughs> usually, it, where it does it happen? Usually, it's when you uh, protest too vigorously a call by the referee, or you'll make some kind of a threatening gesture after a play or after a penalty. So, I guess Brad McCrimmon must have said something to Dave Newell. They've now had 19 penalties in the game, most for the series, 10 to Edmonton, 9 to Philadelphia. Coincidental double minors, they'll skate at full strength. But the Oilers have come furiously on after giving up that goal scored by Carson, and the Flyers have not had a shot since, and the Oilers have carried the action. Point shot, blocked off, oh, and Ron Sutter got hit with that shot, and he's hurt. Turned around from the blue line was Tikkan in, and I don't know quite where Sutter got hit, but you could see he's in pain. Boy, I'll tell you, those things hurt if you hit the hitch in the skate boot. There's nothing there other than leather. And actually what happens when it hits you, your whole leg goes numb, and you wonder if you're ever able to stand again, let alone skate again. Eventually, the feeling does come back. All right, we have timeout with 10.44 remaining in the second period from Philadelphia, 2-1 Edmonton. Deacon keeping that puck inside the zone. Bob Hodges right on top of it. Then the shot. It didn't hit him in the... Hit him up high. Oh, hit him up underneath the armpit or in the ribs. And there's even less padding there. Oh, he's got his underwear and sweater. He's got it. All right, Brown is out there along with... Carson and Murray Craven puck in, and Brown's last shift resulted in a lot of action in the Flyers' goal. Sent up the center ice to Carson, who has that goal through, and they had Howe over the line and into the zone. 
couldn't accept the pass. Now he works in the corner. Coffee does a nice job of tying him up. Cuddy springs that puck free, and then Tiekeman bats it around behind for Coffee. Cuddy, and on the far side, it got past Dave Brown, who didn't pick up the puck. Here comes Tiekeman up the middle. He's got Brett Curry with him, and then drops it off, and nobody's there. And back comes Craven at center ice. He can get a stop with the play, and a trip against Philadelphia's Crossman. We'll have an Edmonton power play coming up. 10-12 left second period, 2-1 Oilers. Bob Crossman picks up a tripping call away from the play, quite a, far, a distance away from the play, uh, rather. 9.48, and it's a tripping minor. This will give Edmonton its third power play. 0 for 2 so far. What happened in game... Flyers had been breaking up. They got the play. How it taken off a, a, off a player. And then it happened, I guess, even out behind, beyond that, where Crossman was taking his player out. And we've seen it done so many times in the playoffs where players are taken out of the play, dumped and not called. And yet, on occasion, the referees will call them on different types. And I guess they determine it by what is instrumental in the play or not. I'm just guessing on that part. Deja vu of Sunday. Oilers take a 2-0 lead on Sunday. They did it tonight. Then the Flyers come back with a goal at the seven or eight minute mark of the second period. And on Sunday, it was a power play by Randy Gregg at 12-21 that gave the Oilers a 3-1 lead and they put a clamp on the game. So it's following suit. And if the Flyers don't want history repeated, they've really got to come up strong on this advantage for the Oilers. They're 0 for 2 on the night, 3 for 20 on the playoffs. Messier out along with Gretzky. And they go with Nielsen and at the point, what's the line in with Randy Gregg? Nielsen on that far side. Flyers have Craven out with Ron Sutter. They go back to the point. Gretzky's on the left side. Look, shoots. It's blocked off. Flyers try to come out, and they spin it up the middle. And here comes Craven. They got a two-on-one with Ron Sutter. And the pass by Craven. He tried to measure and feather it. Blocked off by the one man back, and the Flyers had a tremendous chance to go up and smoke. The Oilers back down that right side. Messier penetrates against Craven. His pass again blocked. Whacked out and taken by Philadelphia. And Ron Sutter is able to poke check it into center ice. 9.35 remaining in the second period. Up at center, Colin is out there now taken down, but controls the puck at center right, gets up from a fallen position, and drops the puck into the neutral zone. Rutzelainen, who has Greg back there. 9.20 remaining in the period, and we have a minute remaining on the Oilers power play, and Gretzky turns in line, can't get through Colin, turns again, starts into the zone, drops it back at the point, straight away to the blue line, and Philadelphia picks it off. Pop looks for some help, has none going, Gives it off, and it's poked down the ice by Coolen. And the Flyers now bring out Marsh with Samuelson. And Samuelson goes off at his on with Marsh now, and Coolen with Prop. Flying his coffee at the line drive. Ooh. Flying off the glass behind Hextall. And that's Cuddy's best rush of the series as he falls in the puck behind the Philadelphia net. And Dave Newell, after some consultation, stops action. 8.49 left in the period. 37 seconds left on the penalty to Crossman. He has 29 minutes on the playoff year. Penalties in the game now even at 10. They have 8.49 left in the period. 2-1 Edmonton. Churchill, Niski, Gretzky, and Curry up front along with Huddy and Coffey. Wires to the near side. Coffey does a good job of keeping it in the point. Right side to Gretzky along the far side. He takes it from Huddy. At the hash mark, straight away to Huddy. Look, back to Gretzky, trying to go over Craven. Side of the net, Christian Niski was there, back to Gretzky. They're playing cat and mouse to Huddy. Boom! And save made. And the rebound shot on the net by Curry. And then Hexel feels it around to the blue line, but Huddy keeps it in. Blocked off by Marsh, and Marsh lands it down the ice. The Flyers will get a man back in seven seconds as... Here comes Coffey again, up the middle, gets inside Eklund at the fly line, an offensive corner dump, winds around to the near side to Curry. Curry turns, goes to the point, the Flyers clear it out and down as we get a stoppage of play. We're going to the play, uh, player's box. Okay, and the penalty is over and the Flyers survive. They've had only nine shots through 32 minutes of play, but they trail only two to one. Four of those shots have come in the second period, and one of those shots, Lindsey Carson picked up his third goal of the year to put the Flyers right back into it. Again, the Edmonton Oilers had a couple of good chances on the power play. The first shot, Hextall was able to see all the way. Curry quick, took a quick snapshot again on that rebound, and Hextall again was in position to make the save. The first shot had to go high by Huddy as the Flyers' Craven went down to block it. Makes it easier for the goalie when it's up higher. Huddy puts it in front, uh, trying from the boards. Flyers pick it off and send it up the ice. 
Philadelphia with Prop. And here comes McTavish. He'll pick it up into the zone. Over the line. Cuts to their side. Tries a shot in motion. It's smothered. Round around to Prop. Tries to come out with it. Blocked. Flyers on the second try. Ice it. And both officials agree. John D'Amico and Bob Hodges. That will be the violation as Kevin Lowe catches up to the puck behind the oiler net. Flyers not had a shot since the 7-12 mark. And that encompasses the last five minutes of play after they score. Two on the score, Edmonton lead, 7.38 remaining in the second period here at the Spectrum. Flyers will go with Marsh and Samuelson along with Derek Smith, Ron Sutter. And they need another body out there. Here he comes, Peter Zezel. He's getting a different stick. The stays off stick. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Messier out there with Gretzky are the two holders of the Conn Smythe Trophy for the Oilers. Their two cup years, 84-85. Mark Zezel will take the draw against Messier on with Kruzel Niski and McSorley. Mooney and uh, Loback on the defense. Puck is dropped. The Oilers get it back to the point. Mooney threw a screen off the high elbow near side of goaltender Hextall and then Mark. Rubs out uh, McSorley, but the Flyers then see the Oilers keep it in along the near side straight away. Action in front. Shot blocked out the center ice by Philadelphia, and here they come. Ron Sutter over the line. He's got Zezel on the far side. Tries to get it through instead to Derek Smith, and the Oilers smother that, and it's played cross ice behind McSorley, but picked up by Mooney in the neutral zone, and through to Messi over the line. Doesn't try to force his way through. Rolls it behind Hextall. Flyers poke it to the point where Rutsa Linen will drive in high off the glass again behind Hextall. And the Mellonby stops in the near corner. Check. Breaks off the check. It maintains balance. Tries to get it out of the rink. Cannot. And the Flyers again not showing a, a whole lot of resiliency or adrenaline since they scored that goal. And again, uh, always keep in mind, 25 games in 50 days. Now Zezza leads the charge. Breaking for the net is Samuelson. Zezza up the middle and the Flyers just have... Mellonby taken off, and here comes Tekin and through to Gretzky at center ice, two on two. Tekin and in the zone. Drives a little weak shot off the outside of the flyer net. Hit Hextall stick. Flyers try to rip it out of the corner. Cannot. Taken off by Gretzky. Around behind. In front! And Samuelson looked and picked up his man as it rolled off the skate and away to Philadelphia at center ice. Ron Sutter over the line. Right wing pass, and then Lindsey Carson shot on a butterfly deflected in on Fuhrer, who grabs with the right hand for the stoppage of play. With 6.15 remaining in the second period from Philadelphia, 2-1 Edmonton. I think it's really been Edmonton's uh, keeping the Flyers from getting anything going. They have really been uh, checking well. They've been jumping on Philadelphia as quickly as possible. And yet the Flyers, when they have that puck in their zone, have been very tentative. Well, this is we talked about play the, the player that's away from the play, and that's exactly what Sammy did so well. Pickner was coming in late looking for that pass from Gretzky. And Sammy did not face Gretzky, turned around, made the right play, watched the player that was going to score the goal who was coming up the slot, and made the big defensive play. 2-1, Edmonton leading, 6-15 in the second period remains. Guy Brown, who gave the Flyers the best shift for the evening, to set up that goal by Carson at 7-12. So that was six and a half minutes ago, and the Flyers haven't found Fury yet with a drive. From that point, Messier against Ron Sutter have been constant companions in the faceoff circle. Back to Crossman, lifts it behind the oiler net. Nobody there except blue-shirted Paul Coffey who gets it off the huddy and away quickly on the far side where it's played but not out by McClellan. He's checked by Brown, but Huddy gets it to Coffey. Coffey looks, retreats to the top of his own left circle, right side to Huddy and up through its center right. Brown makes the play break up for Edmonton, but they control the puck. And here comes uh, Dave Hunter through to McTavish. Hooks it down behind the Philadelphia net. Crossman tries to wheel it out. Oilers block it. They battle behind the net. Two Philadelphians, two Oilers. Now Hunter is in there, the third oil, and he's the one that comes out with the puck. Works into the offensive corner. Spins inside Daniel. Wants to come out in front. Does! And the Flyers are able to rip it out to the point, but not out. It was dangerously close. And then it rolls around behind Hextall. He couldn't make the play. The Carson Lee jams at the center ice. Flyers are playing on fumes right now, you see Letty and Bobby. They just can't muster... A bite, Edmondson with the puck through, Crucial Niski over the line, Coffee breaks for the net, Huts go way out to the far side, taken by Hunter, looks to center, and the Flyers' Dave Poulin is out there, smothers that, Cross, uh, Craven in the corner, comes out with the puck, looks on the near side, and has McCrimmon breaking, but the Oilers' two men back, McCrimmon coming along with Sinisala, drops the Oka, has nobody to give it to, tied up and then shoveled into center ice with the puck. 
then rolled into the neutral zone and played cross ice by Poulin. Nice little move. Boom! And Kaufman is just pulled down on a dumb play by McSorley in front of Dave Newell, who has no choice but to send the Oiler off. And again, the power play comes the way of Philadelphia. Well, Dave Newell has had the Flyers with four. This is their fourth power play now. And they have a number of chances to get back in this hockey game as McSorley picks up a holding call now. And it comes at 15-12 here in the second period, but the Flyers have not been able to really penetrate that defensive situation that Edmonton has in shorthand. And the fact that Gene pointed out they've given up three shorthanded goals in the last three games. And there's no better time than right now with four minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the second period, trailing by one, to come up for the power play. In fact, in six minutes of power play action up until this run, Philadelphia has been outshot by Edmonton three to nothing, so they have not even managed a shot on goal with the man advantage. But all you need is one. And this would be a prime time to get it. And one of those three shots for Edmonton on a firepower play is Lowe's short-handed goal at 502. Leslie shot than a billiard pass off his skate by Gretzky. Then McClellan got one ten minutes later, and the Flyers have only reply at 7-12 to this period. From Lindsey Carson. They go pocket with Prop and Eklund, Howe, and Crossman against Messier, Nielsen, Lowe, and Muni. Puck at the Oiler line. Nielsen takes it, tries to spin it away, and the Flyers take it and kick it into the offensive corner. Pure way out. Tries to go to Prop, and then a throw to center, and just fit away from the on charging Nielsen to Crossman. And then Crossman got Prop in along the left side, hit him in the skate, and he falls. And rolls back to Crossman and the Flyers on that Becklin along the near side. Left side pass and full flight Howe. Spins to the left, around the wraparound to the near side. Cut off is low, it goes to Eklund, back into the corner to Tockett. Tockett looks, has nobody in front, so can't center. Gets it off to Eklund. Eklund holds, holds, now straight away to Crossman. Back to Eklund, top of the right circle. Now Crossman's got a shot through a screen. Oh, and right in there, and it hit Fury, never saw it coming, as Messier gets it and down the ice. So the Flyers get their first shot on goal since their score, and the first one on this, their fourth power play. It has a minute seven to run as Eklund up at center ice. Rolls it through, and it's Cedeno. Nice little move inside the zone. To the near side, backhand shot smothered into the right wing corner. Pock it around to the far side. Pop can't handle it, but Eklund does. Rolls it in, but Huddy takes it away. Tries to clear once, fails. Pop comes out of the corner with a puck. To the point, Zeno looks. Right side pass to Crossman at the board. Takes the shot, tries to go to Pop, but rolls to Eklund off the rebound left corner. Zeno up, chop shot. Hits a man in front. Rolls out to the blue line. Zeno another shot wide to the left of Bolt and Pure through the screen, and then the Oilers shoot it out of the rink. Messier, the Flyers will get an offensive right circle faceoff with 34 seconds remaining on the power play. They're getting some pressure now. They're starting to move that puck a lot faster than they had in the previous three opportunities. And when you move it quickly, that opens up some holes. If you can't stand around with the puck and just wait, wait, wait for somebody to move, that's what the defensive team wants you to do. Move the puck quickly. Make that other team move. 34 seconds remain on the penalty. 3.22 in the period of 2-1 Edmonton lead. Right now, the Flyers stand 4 for 20 on the series against Edmonton. This is their 21st chance. The Oilers are 3 for 21. Craven, Zezel, Sinisello with Daniel and Crossman. Puck back to Crossman. He's there with a the shot. Oh, just high to the long side. As Gretzky's there, fails to come out with a puck. Tries a second time, tries a third time, and gets it away from Cezal and Daniel and sends it up ice. As the power play with 20 seconds to run, one good shift up ice. Crossman looks through to Daniel. Daniel, a left wing pass stolen by Gretzky. Coming with Perry, two on two. Crossman picks him up. The angle, shot! And that was blocked by Daniel. And Hextall tried to shovel under him, but he didn't have to as Craven came from the blind side to take it away and start up ice, but only four seconds left. And the Oiler penalty is over right now as the Flyers hit the line. They bust through, they get a chance. They're around behind the net in front. And it was cleared out to McSorley coming out of the penalty box. Oilers four on two. Up the middle, Curry with Gretzky. Gretzky there, but offside the play that looks so dangerous. Ruts the line and is on with Greg as the Oilers survive and Drop the Flyers 0 for 4. In fact, the Flyers have not had a power play goal scored in three home games and have given up three short-handed. There's a point drive by Greg, deflected wide to the far side. Poulin's there to lift it high in the air over Ritzelainen, and it trickles into the Oilers' zone. He'll retrieve, 
As the Flyers go, Mellonby with Derek Smith and Poulin, defensively Howe and McCrimmon. The Oilers are rink wide pass behind Charlie at center ice. Retrieves, sends it into the zone where Rutzelainen goes in, and then when he realizes Hextall would get there, Rutzelainen quickly gets back as the Flyers roll it to the far side. But Charlie was knocked down when the Flyers get it through to Mellonby. Over the line to the near side, looks for the trailer. Shot on pure, makes the save. Rebound swept in front, but there's nobody there. And the Oilers try to come out. Boom. Big check on Kuzar at the Edmonton line by Philadelphia's McCrimmon. That allows Howe to turn the puck up with a minute 43 left. Oh. Two in the Lindsay Carson. Just as he went to try to dig it out. Low, gold, and swept it away to the corner. Flyers out of the corner with Brown. The shot wide. To the point, Samuelson a shot on. And sure, grabs the rebound, and the Flyers showing light. With a minute 29 remaining in the second third, they're down by a goal at 2-1. to one. Well, that's what the Flyers have to do. They've got to go to the net and make things happen. Now to Messi, he has some uh, Messi has been a very aggressive player for Edmonton, and uh, you have to be. You have to be the player out there that gets in there at all times. And, uh, although I don't think he would want to uh, stay in a fight with Dave Brown. Not that he wouldn't do well. It's just the fact that you don't want one of your best players off the ice for five minutes. Brown's got a real good shot away, but it rolled off the tip of his blade and just missed the far corner. One thing that might be in the Flyers' favor if they can just stay down by one or even tie this game up in the latter stage of the second period is that Grant Fear has not had much work. And believe me, you get very bold quickly in this playoffs. He's only had 13 shots on goal, and uh, they have been far and few between in the sense that he's waited a long time for each shot. And uh, you don't get in the flow of the game. 129 remaining. Zezel against Messier. Puck drop. And Lowe takes it in the corner. Checked by Sinisalo. There's a standoff. Neither can make a play. Then Zezel is able to spring it free. He's allowed to come out. Roll it toward the net. Lowe cuts it off. Gets it off to Anderson. And Anderson looks for McTavish on the right wing at center right. They crisscross. Anderson down that right side. Picked up by Marsh. Boom. They come up high each other with the sticks as McTavish trails in after Samuelson. Fans, as he tried to wheel it past, has to go the other way. Looks up and sends it to Craven. At the uh, left wing side, center right. Now he's through into the zone. Over the line, pass right back onto the stick of the Oilers. Anderson will turn away at center, coming against Marsh. Down the left, looks, shot up into the end seat from the top of the left circle off Marsh's stick with 51 seconds remaining in the period. Well, Brad Marsh did so very well in that play as he put Anderson to the outside off the angle he took the shot he got the stick out there to reflect the puck up in the stands but that's where you want him to take your shots if they're going to take him and that's off to the angle there's an awful lot easier for your goaltender to handle it again anderson coming down across the red line you can see marsh putting him off to the outside that's where you want him to shoot from they're going to shoot at your goaltender when he did the head went down marsh just got a stick out there he was able to deflect that puck up into the stands you know, Eddie and Bobby, the Flyers have lost six home games, and the reason they've lost them is they haven't scored goals. Just seven goals in their six home losses. That's amazing, especially with this club with the record they've had at home. The, uh, you, can't, very, you can't figure it out, can you? I know, it's, it's incredible. You your head. Yep. Lost to the Rangers 3-0, twice here to the Islanders 2-1, twice to the uh, Montreal Canadiens 5-2, and to the Oilers 4-1. Seven goals and six losses. Outlet to the far side, and the Flyers get a break as it skips through Huddy as we're in the last 40 seconds of the second period. The only goal by Lindsey Carson at 7-12. And again, the deficit, that shorthanded goal by Kevin Lowe. Flyers up at center. Talk an offensive left corner dump. Propped there, but Huddy beats him to it. Has a chance to look to make a play, and then is stripped as he waits too long. Rolled in on the net. Played away by Coffey, and then he'll sit on it in the corner, and we'll get a stoppage of play. And the Flyers, with 21 seconds remaining in the period, will get an offensive left circle draw. Coffey made a good play there on the pass out in front. He intercepted the pass just when he did talk. It was right behind him, ready to deflect it home. And he just followed through. Pass is coming out of the corner. There's perfect position to make that play. The interception just to knock it in behind. And Tockett was looking for that play, and he ran right over top of the defenseman, Paul Coffey. Faceoff will be taken inside the Oilers zone with 21 seconds remaining, so this is going to be an important faceoff for the Flyers. Oilers about shot the Flyers 9-8 in this period, 24-13 for the game. Ron Sutter against Mete, again constant companions in the faceoff circle this evening. John D'Amico, 
puck drop. Oilers put it behind the net. Lowe swings it up on the near side. McCrimmon can't keep it in. Slides deep in the Philadelphia zone. McTavish after it with Anderson. So Howe around to the far side. A wrap around that is controlled by Ron Sutter. Tries to come out. The Oilers keep it in. And then Tockett jams it to center. Five seconds left and prop from the neutral zone. Fires a long one off. Pure as blocker as we come to the end of the second period. The only goal, Carson is third from Brown and Marsh at 7-12. There were in that second period four penalties to Edmonton, three to Philadelphia. The Oilers have 11 of the game's 21. The shots in the second period, nine Edmonton, a game total of 24. Eight Philadelphia, a game total of 13. So we come to the end of the second period. Game six, Stanley Cup Finals. It's the Edmonton Oilers two and the Philadelphia Flyers one. So will this be the final 20 minutes? of the year for the Flyers or will it prove to be just a prelude to game seven on Sunday at Edmonton that story is now in the hands of those on the ice Dave Newell the referee Bob Hodges and John D'Amico the linesman Flyers win the draw as they have Craven out there along with Poulin and Sinisello the Messier line is out and Marsh pinned in bumps it up into the zone boom we're gonna have a penalty against Messier for pulling down Craven who had beaten them into the zone and might have had a two-on-one with Sinisello so the Flyers early on get a break. As Messier goes off, it'll give him 12 minutes on the playoff year. The Oilers with 12 of the game's 22 penalties, and the Flyers have not had much going on the power play. They're 0 for 4 on the night, 4 for 21 on the playoff. Then it got through the defenseman on the side, and Craven, who was behind the Messier, was pulled down. And so the Flyers early on get help. Hooking at nine seconds. 0 for 4 on the power play. Philadelphia 4 for 21 against the Oilers. And that 4 really is 1 as the Flyers have propped up three shorthanded goals. So the Flyers are really only a plus 1 on 21 power play attempts. On the playoffs, they are 17 for 88. And the fans are 17,000. 222 have had a love affair this year with this club now. And as Joe Watson has said, brought back the enthusiasm of, quote, the Flyers of old, the Flyers of old. There's a play back to Howe. He looks, he gets a screen. Drive and pure with a nice kick save. Puck behind the net. Crossman to the near side. Shovels it to Eklund. Eklund now comes out of the corner. He's in front. Pass. It was just deflected away as he tried to find prop. Also on that side was the Flyers Craven. And the puck kicks back in the Flyers' zone. And up by Zeklin comes, spins inside the check of, okay, over the line, offside Philadelphia. And that was Mark Howe, who expected the head manning pass from Eklund. 34 seconds gone into the third period, 135 remaining on the power play. Oilers get the draw and shoot it up to center. Gretzky is out there along with Curry. And the Flyers lose the puck up along the near side, racing for it as Huddy. Backhands it into center ice, and the Flyers have to regroup. 121 on the power play. Prop. Eklund, Howe, Crossman, and Murray Craven. It's Cra Crossman through to Howe. Howe up the middle. Looks. He's got a shot. And Fuhrer grabbed it right in the breadbasket for the stoppage of play with one minute gone into the third period. The leading shot producers, Crossman had three for Philadelphia in the second period. Carson three for the game. Yari Curry with four for Edmonton. The faceoffs, the Flyers have won 19 and the Oilers have won 24. Hank Grant Fuhrer is probably feeling more pressure in this period than he has at any point in this series. Mainly because he has not had much action, and I don't believe he's really into the flow as we've seen him in other games, and yet uh, he hasn't been tested severely. That shot by Howe, an easy save, up around the, the waist. But if anybody can handle this situation, it's gotta be Grant Fuhrer. He is becoming the best, if not the best, money goaltender in the game today. Flyers have averaged 33 shots a game in this series, but have managed only 15 so far this evening, but they only need one big one. They lose the draw low up on the far side. Gretzky loses it at the point. Kept in by Prop along the far side. Zezel into the corner. Coming out of that corner, a shot off the side of the net as Pure went for the pass, but instead of going to the right, the pass was short to the left side and banged off the net. Back into that same corner where it's fallen on by the Oilers. Well, the Flyers make that craven, and they're going to signal the face off the neutral zone. It was an attempted pass, and it was deflected off the knee. And what all good goaltenders do, they make sure that back foot is up against that post as long as possible, and Fuhrer did. And even though he'd already made his move going to the right, anticipating that shot, 
The foot was back there just in case something like that had happened. And yet, even though it did deflect off the goal, Pierce's foot was there, and I don't think it could have found its way home. Mike Keenan looking on directly to Belos as the Flyers go Craven with Sinisalo and Eklund prop at the right point with Crossman. Hunter out with McTavish. And defensively, they have Huddy and Lowe. Buck drop taken off by the Oilers and shot down the ice. I'm looking on the bench. His pocket sitting there. He's not made his appearance yet in this period. And the Flyers now up the middle. Eklund, a shovel right side and taken by Philadelphia's Craven. Trying to turn coffee. Drops the pass off, but McCavish is there to ice it. And with 35 seconds left, the Flyers again. Unable to really bring it to Grand Cure with a chance to tie. Eklund again, a tap through, and this time it's Sinisalo into the zone. Three Oilers back into the corner, pop straight away. Shot on, that went wide as Craven screened in front. Eklund tried to go deep, and boom, he took the skates right out from under Yari Curry as the Flyers go into the zone and then break out as nobody penetrated. There's almost a lost puck. Kaka tried to make a play, man in front. And the pass was behind Yari Curry when he was in alone. Three seconds left on the power play. Eklund penetrates. Stripped of the puck. The power play is over, and the Oilers almost back another short hand. A coffee of the rush. Up through to Messier with Curry. Messier is shot. Save and a good one by Hextall. We have played 219 into the Norlis third period. Penalty box is empty. Two to one, Edmonton. Flyers getting the zone, and it was they were in the middle of a line change, and Edmonton had everybody back. And even though the Flyers have get, picked up the blue line, they are, Edmonton is getting on top of him within the three feet, and of course they've been turning that play over. It's called the transition game, going from defense to offense quickly, and they do it as well as anybody. Bobby, with this, the home game, number 13 for Philadelphia. One quarter of a million people have been in the building for playoffs this year. It's an all-time Flyer record. Now Nielsen looks, shoots, short side wide, and he had a little corner there. And penetrating is Randy Gregg. The puck tied up nicely by Philadelphia. Double check in the corner against Messier. Rolls around to the near side. Anderson is smothered as he's had a running battle tonight with Philadelphia's Shell Samuelson. Up by a rink wide pass into the zone. Sinisalo stops against Lowe. Drops it around behind the net to Ron Sutter. Sutter lets it roll to Zezel. Just a little trouble blocked off, and the Oilers smother that and come to center right. Kent Nielsen. In the Anderson, up the middle, he's got a big shot right there off the body of Hextall. As the Flyers allowed him to go in deep, and then Zezel past the center ice, and Asalo's by himself, lifts in, and the Flyers bring out new troops. Mellonby along with Poulin and Derek Smith, Crossman is off, and McCrimmon comes on with Howe. The Oilers have Kuchelniski on along with McSorley. The Flyers trying to get through. Derek Smith is cut off nicely by Edmonton, who played nigh a perfect game tonight at both ends of the rink. They've denied the Flyers ice, uh, offense, and they've had their two and been very, very tough against the Flyers offense. Now the Flyers yelling, let's go Flyers again. The fans forecheck, but it's missed, and the Oilers come out again. Hunter up through to Krusilinski, has nowhere to go, and wraps it down the left boards. Hextall looks, sets it up, and can wing it around to Derek Smith on the near side. He taps out. And it was knocked in by the glove of Huddy as that puck broke the blue line plane. 3.42 gone into a scoreless third period from Philadelphia. It remains 2-1 to one Edmonton. 2 on the score now. What we're talking about, the Flyers giving up the zone. If you take a look, there's two Edmonton Oilers. There's three Flyers back, four coming back into the pitcher with only two Edmonton Oilers. They still get a shot away. The Flyers have backed off that blue line throughout this game. Consequently, a team like Edmonton, who controls the puck so well, has been able to get a lot of offense going. Flyers have the draw to McCrimmon right circle and up off the boards to talk it at his line. Feathers a pass, Pop takes it, through to Howe. Over the line, tries to get inside Huddy. He spun around, they both go down, caught a coffee out of his corner, gives it away at the point, but the Flyers have it bounce off the stick and drops the center ice where Mont Edmonton controls. Huddy is taken down and the Flyers break three on one. Over the line, prop right circle, drive on Cure by Eklund and the save is made and the Flyers had that wide out choice and Eklund couldn't find the hole. The Eklund just took that one extra second to load up and Cure was quick to move across, cutting down the angle and making that save and again that was one of the better chances the Flyers have had here in the third period. Pocket just interferes enough with Curry to make the pass uh, opportunity there and all of a sudden the slap shot was just was one second too late as the goaltender moved across here anticipating and making the save. 
Also, what made Eklund go high was Coffey sliding down low to try and block it. And if a player sees that, then they adjust their shot and they try to get it over that sliding player. Consequently, he had to get the shot up high. And again, as I mentioned, it makes it easier for the goalie when that shot's coming in around the waist or higher. Coffey was complaining that a hooker had tripped it outside the oiler line, set up that rush for Philadelphia. Pulling back to the point, Samuelson right on. Here goes down. The block pass is taken off the goaler's pads by Rutzelainen and sent through to center ice. Messier right winging. The cabbage penetrate. Nice play by Poulin. The slowdown. Messier is still able to get it behind it. All alone in front is Anderson. Boy, the Flyers said have a play there and we're going to get a stoppage as the net becomes dislodged to the left side of Ron Hextall. That has been a real battle. Glenn Anderson of the Oilers and Shell Samuelson of the Flyers. And I think Sammy, when he plays aggressive, he plays about as good as he's capable of playing. Well, he was taken out behind the net, the Oiler player was, and he was just pinned there, McTavish. And one thing Samuelson has done very well has been finishing his checks, and that's something Philadelphia has been negligent in an occasion, is that once that player passes the puck away, they've been turning away from him now, they're, and they're allowing him to get back into the play. And that's a given it. goal. Right, work it. And you, you take that given goal away, you take away a great deal of Edmonton's offense. Nielsen, Anderson, and Messier, but Ron Sutter wins the draw. The march around behind the net. Now Randy Gregg for checking to keep the puck in. Anderson steals left corner behind the net. A given go, and it rolls behind. Messier in front again. It's shot wide by Rutzelainen, who had Hextall beaten to the left and just rolled it wide. Samuelson off the glass, and it deflects through past Sinicello, sticking all the way into the Edmonton zone. Gregg chased by Sinicello. Back passes. And, uh, Murray Craven had a chance to steal. Then he oh. pulls down a man, and for the second time, as Glenn Sather is up on the bench right for the second time in recent moments, the Oilers have been tripped to pull down, coming out of their zone. The first one to set up a good try by Eklund. That time, the Flyers didn't get anything, but they got a lot of huzzahs. Uh, that Dave Newell from the Edmonton bench, and Glenn Sather was up screaming. Gratefully so, yeah. on that goal. He... Flyers trying to get it out of the zone. Mark, and it's blocked in. Curry going after Samuelson. Now on the far side, it's Gretzky, but they get it up to Brown. Brown, left wing a pass. Carson rest the goal into the zone. Stop. Look. Tries to get with a pass. It's tapped off the stick to center ice. And the Oilers are showing a new facet of the... They're trying to win the Stanley Cup with defense. As they have allowed the Philadelphia Flyers 15 goals in six games. That's just two and a half. And for a team to beat Edmonton, not enough. With 5.39 gone into the third period from Philadelphia, 2-1 to one Oilers. 14-21 remaining in the third period. Edmonton still has that 2-1 to lead. Philadelphia goes with Zezel, Mellenby, and Derek Smith. Daniel with Crossman and the Oilers. At Trishel Niski out along with McSorley and Hunter. Offensively, Coffey with Huddy. Pass to center. Daniel smothers it. Followed up by the Oilers and lifted offensive left corner. Crucial miss. McSorley in there. Bumps how. But Mellenby around behind the net. Wheels it up on the left side. And Derek Smith will take it out at center. But the Oilers quickly four men box back. And they stop Philadelphia's attempt. It rolls behind the... Oiler net, there's a lost stick, and it was Derek Smith, but he tries to keep action going, then picks it up, but then the Oilers are able to drift it to center ice. Crossman off the far side, taken and lifted into the zone by Mellenby. After it is Coffey. Flyers cut off in their pursuit. Coffey to the near side, lifts, knocked down by Mellenby. Tapped that, though, by Krzyzelniski and Coffey, and the Oilers bring it to center ice. By himself is Hunter, waiting for some support. None is coming, so he slides it into the flyer end. As out comes Gretzky Curry, along with McTavish, is now the Oilers making sure that they get a good checker out there, along with Gretzky and Curry, as they don't make mistakes defensively. The Flyers tuck it into the offensive right corner, prop in there with Huddy, spins away, gets it around to Brown to the near side. Eklund had it bounce off to Curry, and Curry sends it down the ice. It bounces and skips and rolls right in on goaltender Hextall. And Hex looks up the middle and plays it wildly off the body of Pocket. His reverse pass right under the stick of Randy Gregg into the zone. Come the Oilers. McTavish with Curry in front. Pass shot right on. And there's a great trigger man by Gary Curry. Hex called the save and then McCrimmon out to the right side. Pocket up the middle and Prop leads the charge into the zone. Over the line. Spun off. How takes it. He's got to drive through a screen. But the Oilers get a stick on the way and it deflects up into the end seats. That was Yari Curry. 7-15 gone into a scoreless third period. 2-1 Edmonton. 
They're getting the defensemen up a little quicker now, Philadelphia. They're moving into the play, Mark Howe especially. That really helps out offensively when that defenseman can come in. Prior to that, Edmonton again gained the, the blue line with that three-on-two situation and then a quick shot, then the transition up to the other end of the ice. But the blue line, Edmonton has had no problems getting over it. Messier Anderson along with Nielsen defensively low and Muni, the Flyers go Sinisella with Craven and uh, Dave Pullen, Marsh and Samuelson. The Oilers control the draw and Lowe just pumps it up to center ice. Samuelson controls it at his line, chased by Anderson to the near side, spins back the other way and has an outlet off the far board, but it skips off the referee Dave Newell's leg, picked up in flight by Sinisella, lost and taken back by the Oilers, lost again at center ice. Marsh tries to get it through and Pullen slams it in. But the Oilers doing a marvelous job of picking up and preventing the Flyers from really doing the forechecking. And then the Oilers ice it. And there should be no trouble for Marsh to get there first. As the linesman Bob Hodges and John D'Amico agree. Midway, third period from the spectrum. 2-1 Edmonton. 2-12 remaining. 2-1. Edmonton leads. This is sometimes where everybody's playing at a very controlled pace right now. And this is the type of pace that Edmonton is very happy to play because... They have really limited Philadelphia in their offense. They've only managed four shots on goal. Vessel, Derek Smith, Mellonby with Crossman and Daniel. Offensive right circle. Buck into the circle. They whack at it and finally rolls off to the Edmonton defenseman stick and he brings it up on the right side at center ice. At the fly line, it's lifted in, taken off from Muni and sent by the Flyers to center ice, controlled by Zezel. Zezel, Rick White pass off a body into the zone. Poked out to the blue line, kept in by Daniel, but they say no, offside. Ooh, boy, I'd like to look at that again. <laughs> that looked cleanly onside, but then sometimes the alignment is quicker than the eye. It has to come out completely over the blue line. The puck was bouncing up in the air uh, when they knocked that puck back. Now, again, we have to point out it has to be completely out over the blue line. It wasn't. It wasn't out over the blue line. That was a pretty good opportunity for Philadelphia. Look from that angle that we saw with the replay that the puck didn't come out over the blue line completely. Face off just outside the Euler line along the Flyers' left wing. McSorley, Crucial, Niski, and Hunter along with Rutzelainen and Greg, the Flyers' Zezel, Derek Smith, and Mellonby with Crossman and Daniel. Puck in the Euler zone and they just pop it to center ice. Bounces and gathers it in at his own line is Crossman away from McSorley. The Flyers drill it up ice down behind the Oiler net. Two Flyers in after it's Zezel and Derek Smith, but they're late. And Rutzelainen wheels it around to the near side. McSorley gets it to center. Takes a bump from Daniel as the puck shot in the Flyer zone. And Hextall off the glass shoots it out. But not so. It was blocked off. Big check. Just a shadow check by Mellonby. Prevented Hunter from going in. And then the Flyers do drive it out. Cat and Mouse as the Flyers trying desperately to get offense. And the Oilers not giving them really a good look. 27-18 the shots for Edmonton. A little reverse pass at center. Flyers get a break as it hits the linesman and they keep it in. Work to the left side and Cockett will penetrate by winding it down behind Fuhrer. On the far side, Low blocks it off. McTavish tries to wheel it out. Flyers keep it in. Out of that corner, it's played cross ice. Trying to find Cockett in the slot. The Oilers break it up. It's shot to center. The Flyers drive it back in and the Oilers get it to Curry on the right wing at center. Through looking for McTavish. Brad McCrimmon comes across, packs at it, and it bops over the head of Curry at the Philadelphia line, and now Eklund turns up to McCrimmon down that right wing, into the zone, rolls it into the corner, cut off by low. Muni doesn't know where to go with it, puts it around to the near side where it's blocked by Prop, in front, shovel shot, it's right at the goal line. Oh, my, and the referee says no goal, didn't get over with nine. 28 gone into the third period. The Oilers maintain the two-to-one lead. That's those quick hands of Grant Fuhrer. Boy, he's able to move those hands and use that glove so effectively. It almost appeared the Flyers were going to get the bounce that they've been looking for. Way up in the air. Pocket flicked it out of the air as well, but Grant Fuhrer's hand, the glove hand that is, was a lot quicker. And he was able just to reach up and snap it out of the air. I recall one of the first two games here, Bob, he made a similar play as that laying in his back and just reached his hand up, his catching glove up, and snagged it out of the air. Mark Dow was the trigger man on that play. This time it was a cap by Rick Tockett, and Fuhrer was very, very quick to keep this game 2-1 Edmonton. 
Well, this continues to be a classic series for which both teams, both organizations, and the league can well be proud, and a fortunate series being watched throughout North America by hockey fans. Sinisalo and Pullen centered by Ron Sutter, Mark back with Samuelson. Oilers have Messier, as you might expect, out there. Then they go Huddy with Coffey. Sutter and Messier, they chop at it, goes to the Oiler, uh, Oiler goal line where Coffey takes it. The candles and outlets on the left side, flying as Anderson at center ice, wants to get inside Samuelson, goes inside, outside, and Samuelson slows him down enough to allow Marsh to rip the pass, but it picked off. There's Messier trying to come the other way, onto the stick of pool, and up on the left wing, Sinisalo is going to be cut off by Coffey. Beautiful play, but the Flyers do get it in, and pull in. It gets it around behind the net from Ron Sutter. He's bumped off, as the Oilers have not allowed the Flyers uh, any opportunity to work from behind the net. As the play comes up at center, into the flyer zone where Samuelson puts it to neutral zone. Messier's pass up the middle. There's Nielsen with a bullet. That's just wide. And the Flyers hold their breath. The fans in every shot. You cannot afford any more give up. There's a steal by Greg. Looks to center as the Oilers coming out of the zone. He's checked off by Philadelphia's Poulin. And Samuelson not lets it off the stick of Marsh to center ice. 9.39 remaining in a scoreless third period with the Oilers tenaciously hanging on to that two goal to one lead both goals coming in the first 15 minutes of the game low short-handed and then Kevin McClellan who right now has the Stanley Cup winning goal on his stick Oilers break up the middle of KCOM Kushelniski over the line looks to feed a pass into the slot Hextall kicks it behind away from McSorley the Flyers uh, trying to come out with it on that left side Mellonby is green bumped off in there is Craven it goes back to the blue line turned into the zone and taken away by Philadelphia. Daniel, his grab spun around and was able to shovel it up at center ice when he looked in trouble. McSorley threw, passed. His man is now Gretzky comes on with McSorley and uh, McTavish. McTavish the checker and the other two looking to capitalize for insurance if the Flyers make a mistake. Eklund at center, gets the puck off to the right side and Daniel to McCrimmon into the zone, rolled off the stick to center ice and McTavish comes back for Edmonton at center. At the flyer line to the near side, rolls it into the corner. Daniel screens him off as behind the net goes Eklund. A little rip pass out to Tockett, and Tockett looks to center as he has a cross ice play to Prop. Prop lifts it in on Pure, blocks it off with 8.20 remaining in the third period. And Flyers cannot forecheck, and Crawford fires it up at center right. Into the Philadelphia zone, Gretzky, Coffee in, puddle shot. Oh, and Hextall as Coffee tried to do a little poke through the pass, and he held it away with 8-12 left in regulation. From the spectrum, Edmonton 2 and Philadelphia 1. The quick pass and the excellent speed that Edmonton has, and especially Paul Coffee. He just tried to fool Hextall with a slow backhand, but... Next year we'll see too quick on that occasion. But this is the type of game, when you're leading 2-1, you're always saying you really hate it because you seem to have control of the game, and yet you only have that one goal lead where a crazy bounce or a goofy shot can try it very quickly. And that is what the Philadelphia is hoping for. Anderson, Nielsen, and Messier. There goes the puck back to the blue line. Messier got it off to Nielsen, who shot it in deep, but McCrossman is there to send it but not out. Then it's picked off by the Oilers, about five feet inside the flyer line. And then finally the Flyers jab it to center where Anderson takes it. To the near side, lifts it high in the air and will chase Crossman into the corner. Crossman tries to lift it past Anderson. A hand pass is then kicked by Zezel off the skate of Sinisalo to center ice. Into the Oilers zone where Huddy plays it. It's deflected to the Philadelphia line. And there's up ice. We're going to have a penalty. It had to be called sooner or later. Anderson has had a stick up all night long on Shell Sanders' okay. face. This time he swings around from behind and hits Zezel right in the face. 85 minutes, 7.39 remaining. Third period, 2-1 to one, Philadelphia. Peter Zezel had hit Glenn Anderson with a solid check. Anderson saw it coming. He hit it with a, with a stick. Anderson upset with a stick. Just swung right around. Watch it come around. Swings right around and hits Zezel right in the face. And he gets the two minutes for high sticking. Now, there was degrees. There was two minutes for an accidental one, four minutes for a deliberate one, and five minutes if you happen to cut somebody. But the four-minute one has not been called through much of the season. So the Flyers have only banked one out of 22 on the power play in this series. But you only need one, and now's yep. the time to get it. All right, they'll go with Crossman and Howe as the Oilers win the draw and ice it. And up front, Eklund with Prop and Sinisalo. 
The Oilers go McTavish, Huddy, Coffey, and Dave Hunter. Puck into the zone a little bit too far. Huddy tries to dig it away from Prop. Takes it around behind the net and Coffey a wraparound as Crossman gambled. Was off the right point as the puck fired all the way around by Coffey into the Philadelphia end. Boy, that was a great play by Huddy. Most players would have backhanded it up the boards and the Flyers were waiting for it. But he held on to it to go the other way. Flyers penetrate. Drop pass. Prop off to the point. Into the corner to Eklund. Straight out in front to Prop. Shot! Score! about a pressure player talk about a player who has really had a great playoff Brian Prop nice give and go and when he did he went right up the alley the quick shot high up into the penthouse and we have really been getting down on the Flyers power play and it has not worked very well at all but you only what need a time one. for it and we only need one and, you, and this is when they get it Brian Prop what a play Kelly Eklund Doug Crossman pick up the assist and for Brian Prop, that's goal number 12. They needed something, and they finally got it. Edmonton has been in control of this hockey game. And it's been the great play of Ron Hextall that has kept it close. And also some bounces for Philadelphia. Now they get the bounce. That puts him even with this hockey club now. There's a play up through at center ice. Messier against Samuelson. Spins wide to the left. Shot on and not much of a shot. It goes behind the net where Messier fell and out comes Philadelphia's Murray Craven. Up the middle of the ice. At the Isle of the Oiler line. Into the zone. Offensive right corner dump it all offside. That goal coming at 13.04. And it's 2-2 as the Flyers again have come back from a two-goal deficit. Right now, the Flyers are going to stick to hockey. They're going to be up and down their wings. They don't want to be taking any questionable calls because you can bet your sweet dippy there could be an even-up call coming because the Flyers have had six power play opportunities to three to the Oilers, and the tying goal was a power play goal, so you've got to be careful here. Well, the fans are revved up here in the building again as the Flyers fought back in the 2-0 deficit to deadlock it at two apiece. They well, love this hockey club right now. And, well, they should. Just listen. Dessel will take the draws out with Mellonby and Derek Smith. Crossman back. McCrimmon make that with Howe. Anderson out along with... Messier and Nielsen, so Anderson's frivolity with the stick all night finally tabbed and cost his club. More than the power play, it cost him the tying goal. Puck in the Flyers' end, Philadelphia rips it out to center, gathered in his line by Edmonds and Randy Gregg, and into Anderson, and boom, hit by a check and buried by Brad McCrimmon as the Flyers wheel it around to Derek Smith, and he'll start up at center ice. Lifting it through to the Oiler line, Mellonby tries to penetrate. He does, but is tied up nicely by the Oilers. And here comes Curry back, along with uh, Messier at the flyer line. Curry, Messier swings to the left, looks for the trailer for the net, peeking it on for the first time in the period. He has it behind the net, straight away to Muni at the left point. In the Tekin and breaking in his Gretzky toward the net. Curry knocks down the pass, picked off by the Flyers. And Crossman up the Zezel on the right wing with 5.39 remaining in regulation. Up the middle, the pass, trying to find Prop again. The Oilers to the point. Dino is up. He scores! Boy, I'll tell you, these people are going crazy. This is when Everton has given up the blue line and we talked about it. Yuri Curry made a great defensive play, but the puck comes off the board slowly. Daniel moved up very quickly, and I think Scott Mellaby deflects that puck 
And Mellaby gets the lead goal. The Flyers have struck quickly here in the third for their for two goals. Less than or just over a minute, a minute 24 seconds to be exact. They've given it to Daniel. I guess Mellaby did not touch it. But JJ Daniel very quickly moved up on that play after Curry made a super defensive play. They intercept that pass to Prop. Fire it back off the boards, but the boards, or the shot rather off the boards, was a rather a dead one. It didn't come out, it didn't come off the boards as briskly as we've seen it do in the past, and it allowed Daniel to come in and one time it. What a time to get the first NHL playoff goal of your career, but hey, a lot of time left. Almost a steal at center ice. Fire shoveling through to Sinisala over the line and shot. That went wide. Followed up by Poulin, who wristles it over and around behind the oiler net. In the corner, it's played by Craven. He's cut off, and Huddy now digs it out and isolates it past Curry and down the ice. We have five minutes remaining in regulation, and the Flyers have stunned the Oilers again with a pair of goals a minute and 24 seconds apart. And the Flyers now have what they want, the lead. They hold it for another five minutes, and we have the first seven-game Stanley Cup final in 16 years. Daniel in the corner, cut off by Anderson. Anderson to the point, break a shot. Quick save by Hextall. Messier looks on that, save by Hextall. Off to the right side to Dave Brown. Brown isolates, but uh, Rustalainen keeps it in. He's checked. The Flyers trying to hand pass it out, and it's Philadelphia. Craven dropping at the center. Flyers making a change. Over the line, Greg up the middle. Check. Anderson can't get going. The Flyers see it behind the net. Hextaller up around to the near side. Cut off by Nielsen. Left side pass. Shot by Messier. Blocked by Dave Brown. Then the Flyers Brown drives it in the center ice. Four ten remaining in regulation. Flyers again have come from the dead to lead three to two. Puck blocked off at their line. Brown then lifts it through, and the Oilers pick it off, and Nielsen back offside. over the line to Messier, offside, offside by a slide and a half. Boy, the players can't hear the whistles now as the crowd is really pumped up as the Flyers have come back with three straight goals. We have 3.57 remaining in regulation, 3-2 Philadelphia. It has been Edmonton throughout this whole game. It's been all Edmonton. They have played almost a perfect game, but we've always talked about that, Eddie and Gene. When you only have a one-goal lead in a game that you've dominated, you're always concerned about that one crazy bounce or that one big play, and that's exactly what the Flyers got. It was prop on a power play, a power play or that the Flyers have not been very successful with. So after that, then Mellenby, or Daniel rather, gets the goal, and I think it might be an unassisted goal. It was, it was Curry that bounced the puck off, but Daniel very quickly moved up. And we talked about that, Eddie. The Flyers moved the defense, but up quicker in the third period than they had throughout the first two. Flyers drive it in from center ice. Gretzky, Curry, and Tekin and out, along with Coffey and Huddy. Flyers go talk it, along with Kirk Craven and Ron Sutter. Up on the left side, there comes flying at center ice at the Philadelphia line low. Tries to penetrate, Flyers break it up and slam at the center ice. Play through to Tikkanen. Tikkanen turns, bumped off the stick, fighting at his line now. Has to fight off pocket, and the Oilers get it up on the far side, and here comes Curry at the line against McCrimmon. Stop. Rolls it to the net. Oh, and Hextall went off balance, and it just trickled away, and he had to come back into position as the Flyers wind it up on the far side. Curry tries to go in. It's blocked off, and the Flyers take it. And up on the right side, past Curry comes Ron Sutter. He stopped at center, but the Flyers can jam it in as we come down to the three-minute mark remaining in regulation. 3-2 Philadelphia. The Oilers trying to come out. Boom, big check. Flyers break in two on one. Cecil a drive. Short side save. And it comes out in front. They jam it in on the net. They scramble. And it's kicked around behind. And McTavish digs it out. McTavish spins. We have 2.45 remaining in regulation. Up ice come the Oilers at the Philadelphia line. Huddy makes the rush into the zone. Marsh ties him up. Now McSorley is out there. They jam it into the near corner. They work. It's a foot race. McTavish out. Tries to come in front. Marsh slams it out of the zone and into the neutral zone. No, they keep it onside. Behind the net. Gretzky in front. No shot is taken as the pass was there. Now the Flyers try to wheel it out and they cannot. The Oilers furiously trying to penetrate for that tying goal. Mike Cavish had it again. 
blocked off a stick. Up to Zezel on the near side. He gets it through the center right to Melendy, and then he's cut off. Now we have 2.09 left in regulation. 3-2 Philadelphia. Hextall up to Prop on the near side. He's got Eklund breaking two on two. Prop over the line with a drive. Kate save. Now Sinisalo into Prop, and he try to sweep it through the goal mouth and wide. The Oilers coming back. Magnificent Stanley Cup final action. Stopped at center. The puck out in the neutral zone. Turning back in along the near side. Trying to kick it into the corner. Grab is Anderson. He's taken off. Prop around that right side is tied up. Anderson behind the net. Give and go with Messier to the far side. Flyers try to jam it out. That second one. They jam it up in the corner. It kicks out. The Oilers try to come in front. It rolls off the stick. Kept in at the line. Rolled into the side. And the Flyers slam at the center ice. We have a minute. 24 remaining in regulation. There's Messier through into the zone. Offside, Gretzky. We have a minute 19 remaining in regulation. In an absolutely magnificent performance. Never yielding. Though they were outplayed for much of the game, they trailed two to nothing. Tenaciously, they stayed in and stayed in. Carson got them one back in the second. And then the building exploded as the power play finally connected after five aboard of five club ties at 13.04. A minute 24 later, Daniel on an outlet to the left point, stole it and drove one in on net to Melendy's screen and it scored and it's three to two as now the Oilers have called a timeout. Unbelievable performance again. 25 games in 50 days. 117 games this year with the preseason. Unbelievable. And here they are after so often Four times falling down in this series. Four consecutive times, two goals. They are trying to make it three out of four coming back from oblivion to send this to Edmonton Sunday night for game seven. 119, 79 seconds. Keep them away from that victory. Samuelson, Powell, Prop, along with Ron Sutter and Tockett. The Oilers will have Gretzky, Messier, McSorley, Curry and Coffey, and Fuhr is about 15 feet from the blue line. If the Oilers get it in, he'll break to the bench. If the Flyers were to control, of course, he can get back in. Here it is, my friends, maybe the whole season. We're so thrilled that you're with us. And as we say, fasten your seatbelts. McSorley on the near side. It'll be Ron Sutter against Messi. Now, going back in a little deeper was Fuhrer as the Flyers roll it. Two on the near side. Pocket dumps it into the zone. 110 left. We'll try to keep you so abreast of the clock. As the Oilers now still have that goaltender and they work up on the left side. Curry as Fuhrer heads to the bench. They dump it in. Hextall grabs. Plays off to the far side. Ron Sutter slaps it into the neutral zone. The Flyers check there. They try to roll it free to Tocket. He's into the zone, shoots to the open net and misses. 50 seconds remaining in regulation as the Oilers with a goaltender out. Work the puck out of the zone, up at center right. Messier through, over the line, McSorley into the corner. A wrap around to the far side. Boom, Samuelson bumps off Gretzky. The puck is cleared around to the near side. It's an either or for Ron Sutter. Ties up Coffey. Zezel then brings it up into the, make the players bring it up into the neutral zone. 28 seconds remaining, and we get a tie-up between the benches at the center right red line along the near side with 27 seconds left in regulation. This will go down as one of the grand thrills for Philadelphia if they hold off the Oilers for 27 seconds. Magnificent, all you can say, you must be thrilled with this team and this series. There is no bowler in. The Oilers, though, the faceoff will be at the center right red line. Have to go with the six. Out there is Ron Sutter, Samuelson, Howe, Prop, with Tockett. The Oilers with Anderson, Messier, McSorley. Gretzky, Curry at one point and uh, Coffey at the other. The goaltender out, they go the six forwards. Ron Sutter. Take the draw at center ice. Oilers want to just get it in and chase. Buck drop. Rolls back to Howe. Howe lifts it through. 
And the Flyers jam it to the open net. Just rolls wide, thanks to Coffey knocking it down. They try to come out with 19 seconds remaining in regulation. An outlet pass. Nielsen taps it through. They roll looking for Coffey. Now Hextall takes it. He lifts it high. Not out. Open net. Save. Rebound. Kicked over the net. Centering pass. Five. Four. Back to the point. Five. The third. The Flyers are going to win. One of the great thrilling moments in Flyer history. They have again rallied from a two-goal deficit as Ed Snyder in the base jacket his lovely wife Martha to his left. Cheer on as the Flyers tie the game at 13.04. Props 12 from Eklund and Crossman on the power play. And then Daniel, a minute 24 later, blows it through Melody screen from the left point for the game winner. But the Oilers attacked at the end and the most heart-stopping time with about 10 seconds left, Hextall had the puck cleanly and tried to outlet it, but hit an Oiler. He was way out to the left. The Oiler had a chance to make the play, did not, and the Flyers win it. 